Hey, everybody, I'm Marshall Lohman. You might recognize me from such shows as Prison Break and True Blood and now Humans on AMC. And you're listening to The Dave and Creech Show. This is The Dave and Creech Show, the only podcast where podcaster C.J. Creech and actor Dave Sheridan come together to talk all things entertainment with your favorite entertainers. Want to ask our guests a question? Tweet them to at Dave Sheridan or at CJCNOV88, and they may be asked to our guests live on the show. We do have to ask you stay seated during the podcast because this ride may get a little bit hilarious. Now here's your hosts, Dave and Creech. Hey everybody out there, welcome to episode 42 of the Dave and Creech show. I am Creech, he is Dave, and we've actually got like a a really long episode today. Well, that's because we have a lot to cover, and um, how you doing everybody? Dave Sheridan, and I'm here with Creech, and this is episode 42, as he just said. Creech, I feel like we've been on episode 42 for like five episodes. Are you sure you're keeping track the right way? I mean, it just (laughs) feels like 42 has been... I am, yeah. I double checked actually before, right before we we started this. I had to go back and double check, and the last one was episode forty one with Michael Emerson. Mm-hmm. And Got yeah, it. we're. It seems like we're kind of just stuck in our forties right now. I don't know why. It does seem like we've been in the forties for a while. You know what? You're not forty yet. I'm in my forties, and it kind of is a symbolic of life. You when you hit that. 40s, you do feel like you're stuck in the 40s for a while. Um, 40s is not good. 30s is good. 40s, not good. Yeah, well, Just with this episode, we're only we're only 10 episodes away from a full year's worth of podcasts. 50s could be good, but might be worse. But I'll, I'll tell you what goes on <laughs> for a man and a woman. And there's just a lot of... Um, age things that happen in your 40s that's all your your body goes to that next level it's like the third de- third degree of uh morphization or whatever you know what i'm saying it's sort of like uh you know you go through puberty and then your 20s and 30s is you're maturing you're getting you know you're 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 still healthy and you you actually you can put muscle on you can you, can, you start to get better looking in certain ways and um but then the 40s come and then it's like american and, werewolf in london yeah just your body parts, not all, but everything you did in your 20s and 30s start to start to show in your 40s whether that's drinking and smoking starts to show all your internal what what you ate for those 20 years starts to like you know you know play a role in your your health with your colon and your stomach and your organs. So all that stuff starts to, you know what I'm saying? Um, It all starts to sort of show itself. Now it's not too late to turn the stuff around, but the forties is where you start to see the writing on the wall of what could, what the fifties could be if you don't start changing. And, and, and by the way, it does change. Like, you know, I'm saying your, your metabolism your, all your hormones start to change too. So your metabolism goes down, um, your sex drive goes down, the wrinkles, you know, uh, your body replenishing itself starts to go because your, your internal body parts are breaking down. So therefore, your external stuff starts to show. So that's where you're getting your, your skin elasticity, the wrinkles, the skin color, you know, it's healthiness, um, everything like that, you know, your hairline starts to some I mean look some people lose their hair in their 20s some people lose it in their 30s even if you have a full head of hair I mean there's there's a small percentage of the world maybe 10 percent are going to have a boatload of hair their whole life but for men at least in your 40s that's when you start to see like oh I still have hair but it's, it's definitely not as thick as it used to be or the hair follicles themselves are not like as healthy as it used to be and it doesn't grow as fast or you know you got that male 
pattern, baldness, receding this happen. You know what I mean? Like all that other stuff comes into play. Um, well, for some people, we, that we does start come to see a little that we're earlier. We're not Peter Pan, but we're also not Johnny Depp. Because I was looking at Johnny. I mean, Johnny, I don't know how old Johnny is, but his age has caught up to him a little bit. But I looked back at, like, Willy Wonka, and, and the guy looked like he was 25 in that, you know, and even though he was probably 44. But, which, you know, I'm just saying you hit a – there's a certain little thing you hit, and it's somewhere in your 40s. I think I'm just starting to hit it now. I think at 49, I'm – I'm really going to see it, and I'm going to wake up and go, whoa, shit, that hit me like a brick, a baseball bat, Negan's baseball bat. I didn't see it completely coming. I did see some wrinkles. I saw some bags on my eyes. I saw my skin start to droop. But then all of a sudden, one one year, it's just going to really go, um, where, where all of a sudden it looks like you aged seven years in one year. Um, I hope that doesn't happen with me. But, you know, you can't fight time, so it's going to happen either way. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, sometimes the baldness comes earlier. I know one of my friends is 24 and he's balding now. And, yeah. But, you know, yeah, I guess it's genetics or whatnot. I, my big thing with me, Dave Sheridan, the actor, because I wear many hats, but the, the actor side of me, sir, the only thing I don't want to do is I, I do a film, two films a year maybe, so I don't, I'm not that active you don't see me all not on a regular tv show um but i just don't want to, i don't want to be that thing if like someone then sees me in the movies and go holy fuck what happened to him <laughs> he gained like 70 pounds and he's bald and he's really old looking now you know what i mean like i know it's going to get there but i want it to be a thing where people start to see that and go okay yeah he can because there's three types of actors there's three types of actors. There's the actor like a Brad Pitt or a Johnny Depp. Um, I would say Ben um, um, Ben Affleck is that way. Ryan Reynolds, for sure. Just guys that have that, you know, I think Chris Evans would be that way. Just these genetical dudes that will, they almost will look the same at age 55 that they looked at 22. But, but in a, like, healthy, good-looking way, right? Yeah. Then you got your... Then you got your Paul Giamatti's and your Dave Techner's and um, I'm sure there's a list where, and they're dudes that look like they were 47 in their twenties. Right. And they just, but they never changed. So when they turn 40 or 50, they look, they, they now look their age, but they all, but you, you didn't think they changed either. Right. Because you're like, Oh yeah, that's the way Techner looks. He's always looked like that. So, and then you've got your third, actor which is the tough one which no actor wants to be is the guy that was like oh my god he he was um he was young and good looking at age 25 and now he's fat bald and he looks like he's 70 at age 55 um, or well there is a, there is a, I don't know about those but I know there's also a hidden fourth one um okay what's the fourth that's one? that's defined only by the by the name of the actor themselves but it's the Mickey Rourke Okay. Where your face changes so, so, because you've had so many botched surgeries on your face that you don't look like sure. any human being at this point. Yeah, you got that, and you and you and you and you were bo- You became a professional boxer, and you you know, like he did other things. You know, it wasn't just the surgery. Well, like, no, I know. Okay, yeah, that, I mean, he came back he in two thousand drinking, and then four. And, and then they fight him. Yeah, yeah. He, right. I mean, he did two thousand. He came back in two thousand four. You know, he had, and then in, I think oh eight was when he did the wrestler, and he had this resurgence of his career. And then he disappeared a couple of years, and you know, he came back, and he looks completely different again, like almost scarily, like different, like frightening. Doesn't look like a human being at all. It's very, right. It's very odd. But the but people, who who are some who are some of the actors that like you know, who's the number three type that were like, oh, wow, they were kind of heartthrobs, or they were good-looking people, and then next thing you know, it's like, okay, they're still acting, but holy crap, you know, it's like the chick from Cheers, what's her name, and she's always on, like, Jenny Craig ads or whatever, and, uh... Christy you know, Alley? I don't remember her name, but... Yeah, we're like, you know, it's like, okay, she was like, you know, I don't know if she posted Playboy, but she was like, you know, magazine cover, sort of attractive. And the next thing you know, she looks like Rosie O'Donnell. And you're like, oh, wait, is that Rosie O'Donnell or is that Christy Alley? You know what I mean? So um, there are a few of those. Those are the ones. They, 
it's not good. It's not good for their careers because producers and studios want people to look sort of the same because Bam. recognize you know, recognizability and sort of people like to keep tuning in to watch people and go, that's, oh, yeah, that's Brad Pitt. That's Ben Affleck, you know. The only um, one I can think of is, is we talked about him last week, but Bam Margera. And that he... There you go. Bam's a good, yeah, Bam was like, you know, if, he, if, if Bam had like another Viva La Bam reunion or people were like, what the fuck happened to him? Whereas like, okay, wait, Johnny Knoxville looks exactly the same. Ashton Kutcher looks like he hasn't aged, right? But then there's yeah. other people that definitely are like, oh, what the fuck happened to that person, you know? So. Yeah, at this point, Bam probably gets mistaken for his father all the time. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, it, 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 yeah, it, yeah. It is. It is pretty funny. We need, we need to come up with a list. We need to have a list of all those people. I'm sure they're down there on the, you know, when you're on those websites and then you see those like weird square things that are enticing. It just is like 16 actors. You wouldn't believe what they look like now. And then you got to click next and you got to click next and yeah. you click the wrong next and you're on some sort of like advertisement now. You can't get back to the thing. And it's like, well, you, there's like a million next on there and you don't know what the right one is to move the arrow, which one is the one that's going to get to the next photo. You know what I mean? Of, of all the fat, of all the skinny actresses that turn fat, you know? Oh, here's you know I got one. I got a guy that that did not age. Did Val Kilmer? Val oh Kilmer yeah. Went from like you know here's Val Kilmer. He, he went from insane. Batman to Fat Man. Right, and he was Batman, and then he's like, hey, you're not Val Kilmer anymore. You can't be James. You're not James Bond guy. Anymore. You know what I mean? So um, there's there's a good example. There's got to be more than that that I'm just not thinking about. I'll tell you one thing. Some of them you go. Hey, why isn't that guy doing movies anymore? Most likely because they they all of a sudden lost their, you know, like uh, Brendan Fraser. Uh, I haven't seen Brendan Fraser in a while. I know he was, I know he was bald for a long, long time. He was always wearing a hairpiece and stuff, right? So, so if you gained a lot of weight, and you... yeah, I haven't seen him in a movie since two thousand and nine, two thousand ten. Yeah. He might be unrecognizable now, so maybe you do see him in movies and you just don't even realize it because he's like, "Wow, you don't look anything like he used to look," you know. Uh, Steve's probably bummed over not getting cast in the Mummy. Right. You got it taken away from Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise is the is in the Mummy. Yeah, he's the lead in the Mummy. Which Mummy? The one that's coming out. Oh, okay. Yeah, they just released the first trailer, but yeah, he's he's the new lead and uh, the the new mummy that they're doing. The re That's nice. So, is it like a still like an Indiana Jones kind of thing with like mummy? I don't know. They they've only released fi- a fifteen. Like that's the thing that annoys me about Hollywood now. Now they release teasers for a teaser trailer, so it's like a fif- <laughs> it's literally a fifteen second like couple of clips, and it's like the trailer comes Sunday, but, um, it was released today. So I don't know much about the film, but I know it's, it's a reboot of the mummy franchise, but yeah, I don't. And like all, all of these, like Disney does it too. They'll post like a couple seconds of it and be like, the teaser comes this day. So I, I don't get the point of making a trailer for a trailer. Just say, yeah, hey, this trailer's coming out soon. I wonder if I could ever convince Steven Spielberg to shoot a new ending of Close Encounters of the Third Kind or just a remake a new version of Close Encounters of the Third Kind. That that I think that fran- franchise, because they only made one, I don't know if they made sequels, that could even be a really good TV show, you know what I mean? Like an elongated TV show or um, just a reboot. Or it, I think it would be kind of cooler, like, you know, George Lucas, when he did all those Star Wars, he redid, you know, he added all sorts of new stuff into, like, all the Star Wars. I know that Steven Spielberg was not happy with the ending. I, I remember one interview he did a long, long, long time ago in a galaxy far, far away um, where he said if he could redo, if he could, if he could go back for, um, 
that movie, he would he would make the ending different. He he wasn't he didn't like the ending, you know. He was a young he didn't have kids when he made that movie, and he wasn't married. He might have been married, but he didn't have kids. And he said, "Oh, after I had kids and I had a family, I would have never had the guy get on the spaceship and leave his family." And so I always felt like that would be cool. Uh, I think it would be better for him just to reshoot the ending with sort of like um, getting um, Richard Dreyfuss, but CGing, you know, the, you know, the CG stuff they can do nowadays. Yeah. Is so realistic, like making Richard Dreyfuss look as young as he did. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and just shot for shot, like really making that thing look exactly seamless, but having a new ending, you know, that would be pretty cool. That would be. Hey, he might need to, he might need to go back to some of his stuff because I know his newest movie kind of flopped, and that and everybody was, was shocked. I think he did the BFG, Big Friendly Giant or whatever. Like that oh, one, okay. that one tanked. That was the, like a, a bit. It was a was that like a Bigfoot movie. I don't even know. It's apparently based off some beloved kids book. I think it was a remake of a of a cartoon movie that came out. Or something like Got that, it. but uh, it, it tanked. Well, first in of all, first of all, BFG is a terrible name for a movie, especially it a kids either movie. sounds like a food. Yeah, it sounds like food additive. It sounds like an underwear. You know what I mean? Like the BFG like that ball. I think of being a gamer. The, I mean, there's a gun in the game Doom called a BFG, and it stood for big fucking there gun. You go. Right. So, yeah, I mean, I was like, what is this? I thought it was another Doom movie until I read about it. I, I want to start a new, like, little file for myself. I got to get one of those, like, notebooks and just write, like, things. Because I always come up with, like, movie titles, but with no movie idea. You know what I mean? Like, I'm just like, oh, that would be a good movie title. I don't know what the movie is, but, um, like, I have this one today called Nanosite. And it's like a paras- it's like parasites that are like nanotechnology parasites, you know, that like take over humans or whatever. Um, but that would just look, that word would look cool on a poster. And it's, a, you know, nanotechnology is cool. Parasites are intriguing. Nanocytes. The other one is like that, that the, my country tis it thee. Would, I don't even know what that, it's like a song or something, right? But I, yeah. tis it thee is so, that's a weird word. Like that's a weird group of wording, but. It'd be a cool title for a movie. It could. I just want to start collecting good... titles. Yeah, I mean, well, hey, you've got some form of a uh, an audio notepad if you go through all of these hours and hours and hours of podcasts. There you go. Yeah, you know that's not going to happen. Yeah, no, <laughs> and you know I don't even do it, and I and that's even after you know every pretty much every episode's now bookmarked to keywords for certain things like the tells you where what what's being talked about and I'm, even then i'm still like uh like if i like, maybe i would um yeah but well, maybe i'll get an intern someday to just go through at least 41 of the episodes maybe not this one but uh <laughs> and say like uh you know transcribe any 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 funny jokes put them down here any when i say i got an idea put it down on this page <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. I feel like cleaning my room. It's like hiring somebody to organize my room. I, I do believe you'd have a pretty point. high turnaround rate for uh, for them after they listen to two or three of our podcasts. They'd be like, "Nope, I quit." Hey, hey! If you're saying I can get one intern to get through two, I only need twenty two <laughs> interns. I only need twenty two at this point. I can. It's doable. Totally doable. Craigslist. They'll do, yeah. They'll they'll do pretty much anything on Craigslist. You can find anything. I hired, I hired an intern to um, put all my CDs. I mean, I had thousands of CDs to put them on to load them into um, and DVDs. All my DVDs, all my CDs to put them on hard drives. You know, like for my my iPod, and I loaded it all up digitally. And I think it was called Pineapple or something like that, um, or. Um, Mac the Ripper or something that I used for the the DVDs and most of them went on. Most of them, most of them ripped. I think it was only like maybe five that had some sort of pretty good pirating software that wasn't you know encrypting on the disc that wouldn't let me rip it onto my my a hard drive. You know, so 
So somewhere I've got a hard drive with all my movies. Not not just my movies. I'm saying like, I'm saying all the ones I own. I you know I had like 120 DVDs. I get screeners every year. I probably get like 30 on average, about 30 screeners for like you know, and it's happening right now. The whole for your consideration screeners. Yeah. So. You know what I didn't get yet, though? I didn't get Deadpool, but I, they sent me Captain America Civil War, I guess, or whatever it was. Um, right now, I'm getting a lot of kid cartoons. So that kind of comes in. And, uh, uh, I, th- so far, I didn't receive anything that I was like, oh, man, yes. You know, I want to check that one out. You know, like last year was, I think it was Hateful Eight. When I finally, when I got that one, I was like, yeah, that's, that's one I'll watch. Because I don't, I'm not going to sit there and watch like you said, the beautiful mind thing. You're, you're, yeah. No, you didn't mention that. Before. But, you know, I'm not going to watch that one with, like, Engelbert Humperdinck or whatever it was, where he was, like, trying to mathematically solve some thing for, like, the British Army in 1944, Code Breaker guy or whatever. I, I was like, yeah, that I don't watch those movies. I get a lot of those, though. I get, you know, the for, for your consideration stuff, you know. Yeah. They're, they're always those type of movies. You know, you're always going to get one or two battered women movies or something like that. You know, it's like, nah, not interested. Well, so I, so I take those, you know, you got to imagine yeah. I've been doing this for 16 years. So even if I'm just getting those, you know, 30 movies times 16 equals a know, lot. You're looking at, like, it's not that many, it's 49, but it's 49 free movies. Wait, no, that's more than that. That would be way more, right? yeah. It's about four hundred ninety, yeah. And then I and so I got the intern to take those and put them into my hard drive so that I had it all on my iTunes. And then when I get when I finally get my new TV and I get my Apple TV, I'll be able to just have that all. Boom! Hey, bring up my my DVD library, you know? Yeah. Cool. Oh, Someday, you, one can dream. Right, right. When you get your eighty-five inch uh, non-Black Friday TV. Oh no, it's got to be Black Friday. But I'm going to order pickup, I guess. Well, hey, Creech, have you caught up on all your Walking Dead? Uh, yes, yes, I am. I did get a chance to sit down and talk with uh, Alyssa, you know, our dear friend, and uh, Susan Graham from Undead Walking. Uh, about oh, the past cool. couple episodes. Nice. So but um, let's let's take a listen. Wasn't able to get on that call. Yeah, yeah, yeah you All you right. weren't available, but let's let's t- take a listen so you can hear it for the first time. I bet you their thoughts are going to be very similar to my thoughts. I have an inkling, but I'm going to have to listen in on this. <laughs> Three of us are gone. Why'd you bring us here? Welcome. Yeah, Alyssa, this is Susan Graham. She's from the uh, massive, I guess you could say, actually one of my favorite Walking Dead related websites in general, uh, Undead Walking. Yes. Yes, I know of you. And I saw your post earlier, CJ, and I saw her talking that she was going to Oh, yeah, that's what it is. So I knew. I was creeping. Oh. (laughs) (laughs) Stephen Biden told me he loves you. He he said they have fun with you tonight. I'm assuming everybody got a chance to check out the the last two episodes a couple times. Yep. Uh, I don't know about a couple times, but Kara is fresh in my memory. I was just literally trying to think of what the episode before was, because I feel like the season has been, like, all over the place. So, I'm like, I... This one. Who was it in one before? Maggie and Jesus and Sasha won. Oh, okay, okay, yes, yes, I love that episode. I did, too. That That was a fantastic episode, and... In all honesty, I think that episode probably should have came on this past week, and then Tara's came on the week before. That could have been better, yeah. Because... Or or just have Tara's be shorter. I mean, I don't know that she needed a whole episode. 
of that. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, something something could have been done there. And I think something that's, and I don't know if it's because of the ratings or what they're doing it or if it's AMC doing it, but something that AMC used to do really well that I think was a little strange here is that they showed way too much in the clips. Like we saw the Sandwalkers. We saw Tara with her knife down below. We saw that whole exchange with Heat and Tara in the RV that was really intense and really important. And I felt like I saw the whole episode before I saw it. And that never used to Yeah. Happen. Yeah, my, that's why my boyfriend, he will not watch um, any previews for the episodes because that's exactly what he says. He's like, I don't, I just, all I would need to do is watch the trailer and I know what happens. And I'm like, I don't know, I'm different. I like seeing the little clips. But yeah, I totally see and what you're saying. That used to happen. They used to be really, really cryptic about the previews. Right. Yeah, totally. Oh, man. Yeah, I, I don't know. And I hear the commercials are bad, so. <laughs> the commercials oh, yeah. Are, Everybody yeah. says that. They're, they're pretty I don't, nightmarish. I don't... <laughs> but, but, yeah, I um, I don't know. I mean, I want to like this season so far, but um, I feel like, personally, I, I feel like AMC should have made some different choices with either the episode lineup or... With, since they, they this is the first season that they've literally been doing multiple extended episodes they're they're almost doing what you mm-hmm. know American Horror Story and Sons of Anarchy did for many seasons where they're they're allowing them to run a little longer but I feel like with that because of all of these episodes taking place in the same time frame within that same two weeks so I mean yeah it's been six weeks of episodes for us but it's covered the same ground over and over again just different perspectives I felt like Mm-hmm. They could have combined some of these and uh, edited them together, you know, got rid of some of that extra time or even of using the extra time to combine them. So then it would have uh, it wouldn't have been so bad and it still could have captured the feeling that they were trying to get over the episodes. I mean, in, in my personal opinion, um, it, you know, obviously episode one and then they had the Daryl and then I believe three was. What was three? Well, I think they I think they flip flopped on purpose, the the two and three because it was the kingdom, because mm-hmm. of the mm-hmm. of the reaction to the violence in one, so they wanted they didn't want to go right to the the Daryl and Dwight one, so they went to um, the kingdom to lighten it up, because I think the kingdom one was supposed to be three and they flipped it because they got such a kind of a backlash on the graphic violence in one. Yeah, yeah, like I think they should have done for two and three, they could have kept with the the, the little lighter tone and then maybe did um, the immediate follow-up of Maggie and them that we saw this past, yeah, yeah. this past episode. Or even, even just doing Terra on that episode, plus the kingdom, like mix those. And then on the other one, keeping with uh, the whole down with Daryl, they could have used one of the other episodes, I believe. Maybe even if they didn't use the Maggie then, they could have put that one there as well to to just kind of hammer everything home. Because it seems like, and and it's one of the complaints I've seen a lot of, it's just the pacing has seemed off since, I mean, obviously The Walking Dead's been doing this for a while. I mean, they did it with with Glenn, uh, and did he survive the, the dumpster gate? Uh, saga that, that yeah. was going on, you know, and they were doing <laughs> everything else in between. So, I mean, it's it's something they've done before, but I think since, you know, coming off of episode one, it was such a major moment that I feel like that's hurt them uh, by doing that, going back to that formula again, uh, when people just want to see, I mean, I you know, something happened because... We're at right right now, and I mean, I called it a couple episodes ago, actually, with when uh, it was me and Alyssa and Christopher Berry. Uh, I, I I was like, they're probably going to do bottle episodes for most of this first half of the season, and and sure enough, they have. I mean, seven and eight will obviously start continuing the plot, and I mean, we all we all know as as avid fans of the show that the reason being is they're trying to build up all these communities, so eventually Rick and there's going to have a whole group of different communities going to war with Negan, but um, with the with the ratings dropping, 
I don't know what's going to happen there. I mean, they're guaranteed a season eight at this point, but uh, they've now the the Terra episode uh, dropped again I, to ten ten point some odd million viewers. So uh, they, I know probably people are freaking out right now trying to figure out how to write that. Yeah, I think too with when they when they preview, and the only reason I see some of the previews is because I'm I'm putting them up on Twitter from our articles. Um, People see that and they know that that's coming, so then they don't bother necessarily watching it live because they see, oh, this is going to be a tear episode. I don't need to do that one. I'll watch it during the week on demand, or I'll watch it whatever. You know what I mean? So they don't they don't have that same urgency as if they could see that it's going to be something with the main cast in there. Exactly, and I think that's one of the the reasons I, that me and Alyssa chatted about as well is that. Um, especially now you saw it with this week. Uh, one of the trending topics on Twitter after this episode airs was, was people were trying to figure out who Heath was. Um, just showing there had been, oh there, there had been such a long break of seeing him on the character and, and Tara that they even forgot about Heath. And so, yeah. I, and you know, I, I didn't even realize it until watching the talking dead when Chris Hardwick noted that it had been nine episodes since we had last seen Tara, which, is a huge amount because I mean even when Beth disappeared that was maybe four episodes this is like double that and uh you know after all the big losses that the the main group had experienced the the kind of death of the doctor was kind of low on the totem pole and I felt like since they gave it an extended episode I was really let down with this recent one that they didn't explore you know those ramifications because um she just kind of I mean in the end I guess yes she seemed kind of numb to it because, uh, I mean, Glenn was the one who brought her back, and uh, she had, you know, had some experiences with Abraham, and then obviously Denise was was her girlfriend. But it just it seems kind of weird that they would gloss over her getting that information, all things considered. But I don't know this uh, this episode. I I I loved the the pr- pr- uh, previous one with Jesus, of course, uh, but I felt like the one this week was kind of iffy at best. Yeah, it seemed more to introduce that community, but yet if it was to get the reaction from Tara, that was so, it was like you say, like a little too little too late. It's, it's, we as the audience almost can't have a reaction to their death six weeks later. Yeah, exactly, and and I don't even remember the time frame of when that episode was, but I believe that's uh, if we're going by even just when the the not even episode numbers, but when that episode aired, that was what February March of this year when when that episode aired, and that was like you know forever ago in, in TV age. Oh, even Denise's death, yeah, yeah, and that and that was so beautiful. That one hit me really hard. Her death hit me very hard. Um, when it happened, surprisingly hard. Yeah, I um, and I don't. I hate to use the, the the phrasing because it's it's very pun like, but I really didn't see that coming. No, I didn't either. <laughs> I didn't either, and it 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 hurt me, and it hurt me even like days after it happened. Um, she was a character that I really related to, and it that was a hard death. Um. Yeah, I think the the weird thing about this show too, and I know they can't do anything about the number of episodes, is and especially with the cost of the type of filming they do, is that if they're following the comics and the comics are getting bigger, and it's it's getting more novel like, and when you're reading a novel, you can sit and you can get, you know, you can have, you know part two and and you can go and you can explore a whole different community and then you can come back and your brain can remember all of where you were but when you leave visually in a tv show it's it's hard to come back to you know do you know what i'm saying yeah to where yeah, let's take a look at it. to where you were um you know like um i don't know if you if you read the help or there's a lot of similar books that will will go from character to character to character from points of view, and you'll you'll almost forget, like you were with Abilene for a while, and then you're reading from her point of view and all of her stuff, 
and then all of a sudden you'll turn the page and it goes back to, I forget the other um, character's name. Um, but then you start reading her and you're like, oh yeah, I want to get back to her and where she was in her house. And, and so, but you remember, but with a TV show, it's a little bit different because you, you know, you, it's just, you haven't seen those people for so long and it's only eight episodes. Eight episodes is hard. I mean, that's fast. That's a lot of, a lot of stuff to get in there. And, um, and Negan was such a huge thing. It was such a huge hype for, from January to May. And then, and I hate saying this, but I find him, <laughs> I really, really like him and he's awful and evil and things, but he's, he's very tedious on screen. He's like very repetitive. Oh, yeah. I feel like that's Negan. Negan, I'll read Negan in the comics. I just caught up. I've been reading the comics, and I just caught up. And Negan is, is just, he's just that way. He just yeah. grinds your gears. And you can't, you just, but he's just there. So you have yeah. to be, you have to deal with him. So, so they're going to have I guess that's part, to, part of his uh, character. Well, they're gonna, I mean, if they're going to keep doing that on screen, they're going to have to figure out a way to, to, to you know, figure it put that in there. Do you know what I'm saying? They're going to, you know, right. they're going to have to, I don't know. I give them credit though, because it, when you think of it, it is so much story to tell. And I have always said, I don't feel like they get enough time to tell their story on screen. So then when it comes to us, it's all feels like it's jumbled together and, and chaotic because really they're having to jam a lot of stuff. I mean, this whole war with Negan is a huge thing and so I, I've liked this season. I don't, I mean, they could have switched up the episodes a little bit and showed different stories here and there. That's my only gripe about it. But other than that, I've really liked the seasons and the season. And I don't know, I just feel like it is all chaotic because we do have so many groups that are under the Savior's thumb. And it's like, it's like almost like how Rick seed it. So it like blew his mind how many people were involved yeah. in all of this. So for us, it's kind of blowing us away. Like, oh my gosh, there's another community here that the saviors are, are you know, terrorizing. So, and now that I've caught up with the comic, I saw Oceanside. So, you know, I, it's going to be, it's going to be I bigger. And I think that's maybe why they introduced it and how they did give it a whole episode so that when they do bring them into the fold later, it's Absolutely. not going to be such a huge surprise. Right. So I, I get it, but yeah, I have that same complaint too about Tara at the end. I just, I, you know, the connection she had with Glenn and Denise, I just expected like this huge breakdown from her. And she was just kind of like the same chill Tara, like, oh yeah, no, I'm good. So I was kind of disappointed in that. I guess I expected some tears and like, falling to the ground i don't know all dramatic <laughs> i think that might come, that might come at a different time when we don't expect it and i hope i don't sound right. like coming off negative because i'm not i don't i don't feel that way at all because i'm a i'm a diehard fan i think like what mm -hmm. is saying too is that there are so many um casual fans that like don't even know who dwight is like where which i think is crazy of course yeah. or right. <laughs> that's why he um like, that don't even know who Heath is. Um, yeah. But uh, I know I just want to tell those people all the time. I'm always like, just just stay with it. It's so good. It all comes together. It will pay a, off. It just, it seems chaotic now, so just yeah. <laughs> stick with it's it. A big picture thing, and that's what I think I was trying to say with yeah. the novel kind of thing, that with, when you're reading a novel and you go from, from piece to piece to piece, it's like what you say when you're reading a novel, like, stick with it. Like when you right. when you like go and and maybe in the first fifty pages you you aren't quite getting it or you don't you you don't know if you want to stick with it and then all of a sudden you're like it's like you're hooked and you can't you you can't stop exactly and, and you're yep. so glad that you stayed with it and then you see the whole picture come together and I think that's happened a lot in a lot of seasons where like especially season two where people some people hated season two and I love season two. And I think, oh, I love it too. <laughs> I think Sophia coming out of the barn, if they would have had Sophia coming out of the barn, like after two episodes, it wouldn't have had the impact that it had. Right. We've gone through that slow, you know, all the things that we went through. 
And not only that, is it was a progression for Carol's character. Like, it was going to pay off later as we saw her grow. That was the payoff, was who Carol became and who she is now, well, who, she, who she's struggling to be now. So it's right. like, at that moment, like you said, people were just kind of like, oh, my gosh, they, oh, what was it, a whole half season? Yeah. Oh, my gosh, they were just looking for a get it over, you know, and it's just like, but really that, that defined Carol in a very sad way, but it did, you know, she lost everything, but she rose from it. And so, yeah, I just, that's what I would tell people, stick with it. It will pay off. I think the second half of the season will definitely be the payoff. So I always think too of like Gareth and the Terminator people, or Terminator, um, Terminator people. <laughs> I can't talk sometimes. Um, yeah, it's okay, me either. <laughs> um, that, that resolved itself so quickly and some of the wolves things, and then people will complain and say, well, the wolves didn't, didn't ever go anywhere, or the Terminus thing didn't really go anywhere, or it resolved so quickly. Well, you, you can't have it both ways. Okay. You know, I mean, you have to, there's, it's, it's, a tricky, it's a tricky line, and I think sometimes, too, we think we could write it or move things around, but... Every little thing that you move around affects everything else. And right. I think they, like a domino effect. Yeah. yeah. I was going to say the domino shit. Um, <laughs> <yeah. laughs> they have such a big picture in mind. And I hate when people say filler episodes because nothing's filler. Um, I just kind of try to trust and know that they have a whole eight episode picture in mind. And it all will come together somewhere. Um, yeah, I, I but, feel like... And there are there are episodes that are are less, like four B season four B wasn't that big. I didn't care for that as much as others, but I still love the show. Yeah, I, I love the show too. I, I will say the Tara episode's probably one of my least favorite episodes. Mine however, too. However, it, it's not the worst one. I mean, my my personal worst episode. Um, it was actually the one that features the appear the first appearance of my buddy Ross, and I believe it was called Still, but it's the one right right when uh Aaron is revealed at the end when they and they're, they basically everybody spends the entire episode skulking and crying because uh, Tyrese had just died, <laughs> yeah. um, and and Daryl's emo burning himself with a cigarette <laughs> in the woods. So that was that was my that's my least favorite episode, but um. Yeah, I mean, I didn't care for Dawn. I, I just didn't didn't really like her character that much. I didn't I didn't get her psychology, so I just don't. I never really. I kind of too. I kind of zone out whenever she's on screen. <laughs> oh yeah, the the Grady episodes. Yeah. Yeah. She... They're okay. They're okay, but I just kind of I don't know why I just kind of zone out when they're whenever they're on. <laughs> I yeah. thought those episodes were pretty refreshing. I thought it was a cool, different setting. You know, we're used to being out in the woods, and then next thing you know, you're like in the super clean hospital, and you're like, "What the hell is going on?" Yeah, so and again, cool those thing, were important, but, yeah. and, and, and they were important, and they they introduced Noah, and they had important cool things in them, but they just I just somehow zone out when they're on. I feel like Noah was the, <laughs> yeah. the worst character on the show. Um, oh, really? Might I add, and just because I feel like. Everything, it was just, it's just bad. Because, you know, I mean, basically Emily Kenny's character, you know, Beth, fights to to get him away from that. So then basically, you know, he gets, he goes to Rick's team, so then, you know, they do that. She dies because of that. And then he's like, well, <laughs> Noah wanted to go to Washington, so let's go there. And then, of course, <laughs> Tyrese dies on the on the journey there. Then Noah dies once they get to Alexandria. Now Rick meets Negan because Noah wanted to go to Washington. So it's just like <laughs> Noah just kind of just messed everybody up on that show. I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm Yeah, he didn't have like, I, there's always like this ripple effect when somebody dies, you know, and a lot of people are impacted. I, yeah, I don't feel like a lot of people were maybe impacted by Noah's death as profoundly as like others. I mean, I think Glenn did, but in the way yeah, yeah. come on, Glenn has seen so many, <laughs> so many more, I want to say, important people die, you know, right. so yeah. I would think, you know, I don't know. Yeah. I agree with you, CJ. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If, I, if I was Rick, I'd be, like, sitting at that line, I'd be like, if, he's probably thinking if it wasn't for, for Noah, I wouldn't be here. 
the only thing that ever really right. made me kind of mad on The Walking Dead that I, but I got over it, was the dumpster. I I thought <laughs> they should have let him die at the dumpster. You know, I kind of agree die. too. Yeah. I kind of agree and too. I, and I especially, and I wrote about this once, especially if they were going to just have him die from Lucille. What did he do between the dumpster and Lucille that was that, that did anything that important or changed the story? He flew, he flew some green balloons and took a shower with Maggie. Yeah, that, that yeah. they couldn't have had, a, he, that his death couldn't have been really, really, really special is a bad word, but it could have been really cool dying there and either never having Maggie found out because that would be true, something that could happen in the apocalypse is you could die and nobody could ever find out. Um, right. And Nicholas got to say thank you, and that could have happened, but, I mean, he could have died there, and she would have just had to deal with just like people in war, and their wives in war would, you know, people died and their wives never figured it out, and they just had to just find out, you know, see, assume they were dead or go on with life without them you know honestly i i'm think i've just been thinking about that scene the moment if i were glenn the moment i saw that dude put the gun to his head and oh. i'd instantly be like well yeah yeah exactly if you're gonna <laughs> do it i'm i'm definitely not gonna have a sit down discussion with you to try and talk you out of it when we're surrounded so if that's your choice I'll be happy to freaking do it for you. Just to get them distracted. And I'm making a leap for it because I'm pretty sure there were some fences around that dumpster. So I would have made, like, yeah. a daring leap for that after he was being devoured. Yeah. That, so. that or, <laughs> if you say, if he would have killed, if Nicholas would have killed himself and said thank you, and then somehow Glenn would have, like you say, leaped for it or done something like that. But the fake out I didn't right. care for. Like if if because I do think that Nicholas was was saying thank you and I'm going to take myself out of this picture and let you not have to worry about me anymore and let you deal with yourself and not have to take care of me because that's you know I'm I'm you you worry about other people other people too much anyway so I don't see a way out of this I'm going to take myself out of this you try to save yourself not so not to mention. That that was probably one of the only other times that, even though I generally watch it as for its entertainment value, that you have to go, uh, okay, that wouldn't happen. Like, because basically the way that the, after he shoots himself that they show him falling, he'd had to do a full spin around uh, for, for Glenn to, yeah. to catch him like that. <laughs> Same with the, the van flipping off the bridge and landing somehow on its on its yeah, uh, yeah. Its i always notice that oh my god like even even like I, you watch from the the view of the the van as it's going down you're like it's definitely not going to land on its wheels at all and, oh, yeah. and somehow it makes that magical like complete flip and lands right on its wheels <laughs> and you're yeah. like that doesn't seem right no then you have to remind right. yourself well, i can see how that would be I don't know. I can see how that would be hard to achieve, but because like, you can't really control like, how it falls. But like, Nick, I mean, I don't know. Yeah, like Nicholas would have to yeah. do like a full Michael Jackson like spin. Yeah, like, he'd had to shot himself in the head and like whipped his neck around to make his whole body spin to to get Glenn the way he did. Yeah, he should have fallen straight back. I mean, you would think so, or crumpled. You know, like fall into a heap. I don't know. Yeah. Well, and then it ruined like the whole next three episodes for people because they hated the Morgan episode. They hated everything. Everybody just wanted to see if Glenn was alive for the next three episodes. And, and that's basically what they did this season, but they extended it even more. They were like, okay, everybody just got Lucille, and now here's two episodes of, of stuff that, that's going on with the people that you don't want to see right now. And then, oh, wait, look, Negan's yeah. back. Oh, he's taking everything. Yeah. Up oh, well, nope, we're they, back. They've Here's done more. that before, though, haven't they? I mean, yeah. they've done, they. This is a trend. I mean, they did it kind of with the governor, because those, those governor episodes I didn't really care for because of the way they were put in there. Yeah, yeah. So you know, part of me was like, oh my gosh, the governor. I don't want to hear about his backstory now. You could have told me that like three whole episodes ago or something. You know. 
so that one kind of drove me crazy too. But this is nothing new for them. Now they just have a ton of material well, see, to cover yeah, now. Yeah. You know, before it was just Woodbury and the prison, and now it's like now they're yeah, like five different places. I think, I, I, <laughs> yeah, I think you that you pointed out that was season four. And then you know the Glenn thing was season six. I think each season they're doing this and they're they're extending it. They're they're trying to see how long they can they can extend that between the important moments. Because, yeah, like you said, the yeah. governor was only, like, two episodes, and then season six, it was, like, what, three or four episodes. Now we're going on basically five episodes between major stuff, so it's it's interesting. But I, I feel like... And I don't know. I'm going to give I'm gonna give props to Steven again real quick, because he had to keep two major secrets in separate times. That poor guy, I just, they unnecessarily put him through the whole dumpster thing. It's like, poor guy, I'm... Yeah, well, I mean, technically what? speaking, by the time that that episode aired, they they had um they, they were either getting ready to shoot his actual death or he might have already shot it. True. Yeah. Because uh, that aired that aired I remember the week before uh, Walker Stalker Atlanta last year, which would have been late October Halloween weekend, and then they they stayed a couple of weeks after to shoot the death. So, um, yeah, yeah they're, 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 they were, they were, they I do feel bad for that. And same with Cudlitz. Cause I mean, Cudlitz, you know, we're actually going to have him on the podcast uh, again in a couple of weeks. And, uh, Cudlitz has, Cudlitz has been like, uh, it's like between the two deaths, everybody like freaked out about Glenn. And I didn't see so much about Abraham. I mean, I saw stuff for Abraham, I know, but it was I like know. a lot less. And I'm like, ooh, dang. He has like a shadow over his death, that's for sure. I know. Poor guy. And the funny thing, too, was I thought, and maybe I'm wrong, but like the dumpster thing kind of brought people back to Glenn. Like, because when, when Glenn was was not or when he was kind of forgiving Nicholas and not killing Nicholas, people kind of turned on him a little bit. Like, why aren't you, you know, and then when he almost died, then they were like, oh, I love Glenn, I love Glenn, I love Glenn. And yeah. Then, and then, you know, when he got killed here, then everybody's, you know. But, um, yeah, poor Abraham. Nobody, <laughs> there's memes out there like, you know, I died too. Uh, I know. <laughs> yeah. R.I.P. Abraham. <laughs> well, well. We, now, we I love, I love, I can't wait to see more of, of Ezekiel and Carol and Morgan. And my favorite, I love Father Gabriel. Nobody likes him but me. Um, I think everybody's starting to, come, down to, to come around to Gabriel now. They're it's, starting it seems to, yeah. Like he's, but uh, I loved him. I loved him ever since the beginning. But um, I, there's so many characters now that you want to see. I mean, I, I loved the Kingdom episode. Yeah. And, um, Mm-hmm. And I liked the I liked the Maggie um, Gr- Gregory one, and people said that was the worst one of all time or something. They did, yeah. Cra- people are crazy. I, I like that episode. Me too. They've done yeah, they've done Maggie justice. I mean, they like Andrea was she's special to me, comic Andrea, and I, they ruined her in the show. So they have a habit of maybe kind of ruining some characters, like they are doing with Heath. And so I see that they're going in the right direction with Maggie's character. Like, she is definitely going to step up, and I can't wait to see what she does. She's just going to rule everything. When she punched Gregory, I was just like, thank you. I mean, why didn't anyone do this, like, a lot sooner? <laughs> and and Xander Berkeley is amazing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he That's definitely perfect. makes you hate him. Oh, yeah. gosh. He is, he, is a, he is a great villain. And I actually caught him in another movie the, that I forgot he was in, um, and he was a villain in that too. So yeah, I mean he's uh, and that movie was kick ass. If anybody has seen that, but um, I have seen that. Who is he in there? He's the the corrupt police chief that that has the ties to the to the mob boss. That and what movie is that? Kick ass. I thought you were just saying it was Kick-Ass. No, no. Oh. <laughs> it's, it, yeah, it's, it's actually it's actually called Kick-Ass, but it's pretty good, and he's he's in it. And I completely forgot he was in it until I was rewatching it the other day. I was like, well, look, there's Xander. 
Well, that's going to be like the same thing for me because I, I don't remember it. But if I go back, yeah, now I would be just like you. What? But yeah, it's um, he's he's doing an amazing job with Gregory. Um, oh, I he is unbelievable. <laughs> He's like, he well, Asher was part of the hilltop. He's like, get back to your work in the hilltop. And, and I've, and I've, yeah, and I, <laughs> he's, I've seen, he's... I've, I've seen some uh, articles also pertaining to you know his his or Xander's other friend Stephen Ogg, and uh, I mean for a while the rumor mill was stating that Stephen was actually going to play Negan before they announced Jeffrey Dean Morgan, and in some ways after seeing his performance. The, in that episode, I was like, you know, he could have done Negan as well, because he's just perfect. He's good. And they play off each other really well. You know, the thing about Gregory, I'm sorry, I'm still thinking about Gregory, because I think he's a very, like, people, if you look at him, you wouldn't think that he's outwardly dangerous. He's not a fighter. Um, but what makes him dangerous is how much of a coward he is. Yes, because as we saw, he was just going to give up Maggie and Sasha because he's a coward. And so it's like he's a bigger danger to that community than, I want to say the saviors at this point, because the saviors can burn some freaking cars and let some lockers in. But if you got this guy ruining big plans to take down the bad guys, well, I'd say he's he poses the most serious threat at this point for the hilltop. So they need to, like, do something with him. Maggie needs, needs to punch him into the ground or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I feel like if, um, I feel like if Nicholas would have survived and, and still been his kind of Weasley way, if he'd, if he'd have grew older and managed his own place, he'd have turned into Gregory. Who was that now? Oh, yeah. Nicholas? Like if Nicholas, he, yeah. Yeah, if he, if he would have left Alexandria before everything went down, you know, before he, he died, I f- and found his own place. I I'd have felt like he'd have grown into that kind of Gregory like yeah. role for sure. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Because Gregory Gregory was probably like a businessman or something before, and, and he doesn't. And he was he he was very um. He's somewhat similar to the governor, although the governor had a little more evil in him. But he's got that. I I always remember the governor saying to Rick that he was sitting in his office taking orders from a, a boss half his age, and he had that 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 thing where he was, like, just always didn't feel good enough. But the, the Gregory kind of feels like a businessman who is just, he just doesn't, you know, now the apocalypse has, has happened, and he doesn't want to get dirty, and, and there's walkers everywhere, and he needs to be protected from that. So he's like... You know, go clean up, and he's wearing suits all the time. And what the hell do you need to wear a suit for in the apocalypse? <laughs> and but, but you know, get make me some food, and go. You guys do all that stuff, and and take care of this. And I'll pretend to be a leader, and and get you know get all the the organization taken care of. But I don't have time to know who you are, you know, or right. you or learn your names or anything. But I'll 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 you know act official. Um, well, and with the moves that Jesus has, oh, which uh, he was doing some serious oh, yeah. fighting, and then like, yeah, I, he like jumped off one of the jumped off something and then kicked a dude, and I'm like, I can't, can't he just do that to Gregory? How has he not taken over yet? You could have just done all these like martial arts moves, and Gregory would have been done. Just get, didn't they want Gregory head at one point? The saviors, the saviors. Why yeah. would? I would have just been like, here you go. Like, you <laughs> kick him out and shut the doors. Wow. As you can see, I get very angry. <laughs> well, I think about <laughs> Gregory. I think Jesus, now that he sees that Maggie and Sasha can do that, I think he will. Because I think Jesus came in late, and Gregory was already there. And Jesus is, Jesus, I love Jesus' character. Because he's, he's, He's shy and introverted, and but yet he's got warrior skills. But he he watches and he observes, and he's not real. He's a good negotiator, but he's he's and I'm a, an introvert, so I I know that kind of like 
where you don't want to step up kind of thing, where you see things and it takes time to um, to process, and you don't you don't want to necessarily. He, he needs time to to be by himself and to not. I think I think the whole thing would overwhelm him if he had to be the leader. I think I think that's, yeah, that's goes, probably true. I think that's why he goes off and finds people and goes off and does things and goes off and, and is by himself. And um, and he, I think he just tried, he thought, well, Gregory's kind of harmless. I'll let him do that, but I'll try to take care of things kind of behind the scenes and make sure he doesn't cause too much trouble. But now I think he's seeing that it, it, it's, it's starting to build up and there's, trouble's coming so he can't let that keep going so now he's he's um and that happens a lot it happens a lot with me where i kind of let things go but if i see that something really bad is going to happen even if i'm too nervous or i'm too shy i have to step up and and say something even if i know somebody's going to get mad or if i know that it's going to cause trouble i'll just say okay it's it's I just have to do it. Right. That makes sense. And it's always easier when you have good people by you, too, that feel the same way, that when you'll you see, help each other. Yeah. yeah. You see you've got some support. You see you've got some, you know, before it was kind of things were going okay. The, they were making the deal with the saviors. Everything was going okay. And then now, now, you know, it's 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 not working. They're, they're sending people to stab Gregory, and they're sending, you know, it's just things have escalated and so he can't just he can't just let it let it ride anymore right and now he's with carl in the back of the truck i know <laughs> which is very interesting i uh, i wonder if i mean obviously jesus is not going to go all the way into the facility he's going to bail no he's going he's going to scope it out first he's smart Right, but I'm just saying, like, I wonder what he's going to do about Carl, because he's just, I mean, but nobody can really stop Carl, I guess. You know, he's just going to yeah. do it, and Jesus isn't right. going to want to compromise the plan, so he's going to dip out. Yeah, I don't know. Hopefully, maybe he, he can, he can, Jesus is pretty good at um, kind of negotiating, even when, I mean, because look what he did with with Ethan and and the Hilltop people and Rick, because, I mean, that was his own yeah. people, and they, they, they came in and stabbed with their own people, and he was able to calm them down, so maybe he'll be able to talk Carl into saying, you know, look. I don't know. Let's you know, up. Carl also has a very bad habit of not listening. Yeah. So, I mean, we've known that since, like, day one. Yeah. So, <laughs> I'm hoping. Yeah, so he's just hard-headed. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully Jesus will be able to, to, to stop that, but maybe not. Maybe he can do some so. of his kung fu moves and knock him out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like he did with Rick and, and Daryl in, in the truck. Yeah. Duck. <laughs> yeah, he's yeah, not... he... yeah, I don't, I don't, I mean, obviously this week we're picking team. back up with the saviors, but I don't, I don't know. I have the feeling some stuff's going to go down. This whole savior thing is fascinating to me, though, because I don't. I think that that they some somewhat operate a little bit on their own sometimes. Because it seems to me that Negan hasn't shown up really anywhere except for Alexandria. Him, right. he himself. I think he 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 kind of lets everybody else kind of deal with people unless he really, I think he felt that Rick's group was a little too big for their britches and he decided to show up. But I mean, I don't think he's, he himself has shown up at the kingdom or the hilltop. Not yet at least, but yeah, <laughs> hopefully he doesn't cause he just seems to bring like a whole different level to it. Yeah. So I wonder if like some of these, I mean, cause even with going back to Paula and, those people, I mean, there seems to be so many different little factions and, like, their own little Negans. Like, because even, uh, what's his name? Uh, the Stephen Ogg, uh, Simon, Simon said, like, I'm your, I'm your Negan now. Like, kind of like, 
I'm gonna. You're dealing with me. I'm. I'm ready to get it now. Right. Kind he could have came in and killed. He could have came in and killed a few just like residents there, and there would have been like no big deal. So yeah, they can definitely still act to their own accord. I think Megan just lays ground rules. And yeah. they all know not to cross them, and then he's like, "What? if you feel the need to kill somebody, go right ahead. Yeah, and they all, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a weird little system he's got going. Because then even, yeah, because he, he called Simon his right-hand man, and then Dwight kind of lives with him, and is right there just just for entertainment almost, like just to, just to humiliate him. Yeah, and that's interesting that he's pushing Dwight so hard. You know, like, you think you'd maybe, you're making someone totally despise you, but you want them to, like, work right beside you. Yeah. Like, I would, if I were Negan, there's a very real threat that you could make Dwight hate you so much that he comes in and slits your throat in the middle of the night. Mm -hmm. So, like, you can, you can, um, what did Negan say, neuter him? But you can't, like, uh, I don't know. You just can't push people too far because, I don't know, I think you'll find out. I don't think Dwight is going to stay how he is. We've seen a little bit of how he interacts with Daryl. He doesn't like what's going on, but, you know, like, he is surrounded, so he just goes along with it. So I don't think, especially with the thing with his wife, I don't think he'll yeah, stay on I tried to leave that before, and then he thought, well, this is, it didn't work, and so it's better than being dead. I might, might try to try try looking for that power like Negan has and try, try it that way. But it yeah. doesn't always feel as good as it, you think it's going to feel. Yeah, I feel like the, the, the next bromance of The Walking Dead is going to be Daryl and Dwight. Right. <laughs> yeah, Dwight does want to be Daryl, so it would make sense. <laughs> they buddy up. Exactly, and Dwight <laughs> in the comics basically is what Daryl is anyway, so. I was going to say, you guys read the comics. Yes. As comic readers, do you like the Daryl character? No. I was going to say, a lot of comic readers don't like Daryl. I just don't like Daryl. I, I enjoy Daryl. I don't really had a problem with him. I don't, I, I am, I don't know I why so many a, people dislike him. I am a proud member of the hashtag team uh, Kill Daryl already. Oh, um, my gosh. <laughs> I, I, uh, did, did his fangirls ruin it, though? Did his fangirls ruin his character? Because I think he was, birth he, like, was put up on a pedestal. And right. sometimes when certain people are put on pedestals, you get sick of them. No, I, so I, I like think him. maybe that have added to Daryl's um, people disliking right. him. Yeah. But I, his actual character, I, he's a loyal guy. He's stuck by our group the whole time. He's fought for the people, you know, he fights for the people he loves. So as a character, I don't get why people dislike him, you know. My so. my reasoning is, um, I mean, I liked him in season one, obviously. And then in season two, he was all right. And season three is where everything started to go downhill. Because, of, of course, one of the reasons was the fangirls did show up. Um, but my main... My main problem was, uh, I don't know if you're aware of wrestling, but John Cena um, is, you know, the guy in wrestling, and he never loses. You know, obviously they always have him win. And, and I feel like that is Daryl Dixon, and that he's always put in these situations that you could have put in, any of the other characters in, and they would die. But no, right. funeral home full of walkers, and all he's got is a hospital bed or, or gurney. But between him, he's gonna make he's gonna survive it. He's like the MacGyver of zombie. I don't know, but he point. doesn't seem like he's uh he doesn't seem like he's invincible now though. You know? He's either torturing oh, him, so he's not you know, totally just, skipping away from this. <laughs> it's just it's just building up though, 'cause it, it's like, you know, John Cena gets beaten down a couple times, sure. But then you know in the, <laughs> oh, gosh. In, in the, in the long <laughs> battle, the, the Daryl Dixon's gonna come out on top. You know, especially now know, he, he's got a he's got a use like of bazooka. The, again. I didn't like that they played with us with the. Um, well, I mean, I did not like it, but I I was surprised that they played with us on that thing with Negan coming out there and and uh, in the 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 yard there where where he almost 
hit him with the bat. I got I so excited. Was, I got. So I thought excited. that was a little. I thought that was a little um, teaserish. Like I have a, I, I have thought, a, I have if, a gift. If they were going to do it, they should have done it or not done that scene at all. Whenever Daryl does something crazy now on the show, I just now I've got a gif from the the episode one of him getting Lucille. I just watch that and think of what if. Oh my god! Because Norman as a person is fantastic. <laughs> Norman is a great person, but uh, I, I'm not a big fan of Daryl. And and even if you ask uh, his his convention manager, Sean Clark, Sean's not a fan of Daryl either. <laughs> Uh, so that should, Daryl. Yeah, that should tell you something. I like Daryl. I like Daryl a lot, but I I think that they shouldn't, um, like I said, like tease, like where if they're gonna if they're gonna tease any guys, either don't tease it or do it. Do you know what I mean? Right. Where it's like so close. Yeah. Where it, it, do you know what? Do you remember the scene that I'm talking about? Are you talking about from Yeah, the- when Daryl tries to escape, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, that seems yeah. like Negan, if, if, that doesn't seem like Negan would have, would have backed off. If, if he was going to, if, if I don't know. Was- Negan likes to, uh, Negan likes to toy with people. That's true, I too. Him, I, you know. So, I don't know. Negan's unpredictable, though. You know, I don't know. He's hard to peg, you know. I can't really say what I would think Negan would do, because he is, like, so casual. Like, when he... In the episode, what was it, Service, when he just, like, strolled up to the gates just to whistle in a tune like he doesn't have a care in the world. There's something very creepy about somebody. <laughs> they can come up, you know, skipping and happy, and then, but they will literally kill you. If you look at them wrong, like, that's creepy. I just, Negan is so unpredictable, and that's what I like about his character. I think people are just mad at Negan right now. And they just want him off the show because he killed our Glenn and Abraham. Oh, I don't want him off the show. But I have a lot of people that are like, oh, my gosh, just I hope they kill this Negan character. He's like the worst villain ever. They just hate his attitude. But that, that's Negan. That's why you hate him. Because he's got this attitude and he's, he's almost childish in a way with the way he talks to people, like that kind of schoolyard bully type thing. So, but it's like when I read those, I'm like, well, good. Then they accomplished what they wanted to accomplish. Like, you hate him and you want him off the show. And that's why he's not going to go anywhere. You know, he adds too much too much to the show that you're not going to let that go. No. I, no, no. Of yeah, not. I saw the, and, and speaking on that, yeah, I, I saw some of the, the hate mail that a lot of people were complaining about when they, when uh, Jeffrey announced that he was going to, be Negan in season eight, and they're like, "Oh, that means he's not going to die this season." And it's just like, "Oh, well, obviously, if you, you, you know, he's going to be around, unless AMC People doesn't want to pay, he's going to be around for a long time to come." Well, and that goes back to what you were saying, Susan. You know, something if things are too short, people are like, "Oh, why wasn't that character around longer?" And now it's like that with Negan. They're like, Negan's been confirmed for basically another season. People are like, oh, my God, just kill him already. I hate him. <laughs> like, what? what do you people want? No, I mean, no, you can't. I mean, you have to. It's a, then what are you going to do? Are you going to go to the, what's the next thing they're going to do? You, that, yeah. No. Unless if they're all going to war or they're going to prepare to go to war. I mean, it's not going to be an easy freaking battle. You know, I've seen the memes where it's like, you know, we're going to wait however many episodes. We're going to talk about going to war, but we're not going to actually go to war for, like, however many episodes. And I'm like, but really, they can't. No. I mean, it is a big, drawn-out thing. Of course it's going to take this whole season, and then probably, I would probably say at least half of next season, or if not the full season. I can see this whole thing with Negan and the war going on for another full season. That's how much crap happens. But... Also, this first half of the season, I feel like they've moved really fast in in pace with the comics. Like, now I'm thinking, oh, by next season, or even by the end of this season, where are we going to be Like in comparison to the comics? Because I feel like they're flying by. It might be like a, um, a Game of Thrones type thing where they surpass the comics. I think that will happen probably within the next two seasons. I think that would be well, good, think, though. Think about the governor. I mean, the governor, the war the, with the governor took two and a half seasons. Yeah. I mean, you had, I mean, maybe not two and a half, but I mean, it took two 
and a half like sections. Hmm. Yeah, and I think I think yeah. Because uh, when was when was Herschel's death? That was 4B. season when did that? Right 408. Before 4B. Yeah, the 408. Like the end of 4A. Yeah, 408 okay. was when Herschel died. And the whole, I mean, they were in the prison all of season three. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I feel like it would be good, though, actually, if they, because honestly, I think we're going to reach a part where they're going to have to split apart. Even, they're going to have to stop following the comics, because after All Out War, it skips ahead two years, and... So, you know, obviously they can't really skip ahead two years with like Carl or, or people who, who would be hard to kind of age up um, and all that. And I feel like it actually would be better once they get to this part where they're not following the comics because then, one, you're not going to have the comics fans complaining because either A, they didn't do it the right way or B, why didn't they do this? Where And then there's, there's the added bonus of at that point, kind of like with Fear everybody will be on an equal level because they're not going to know what to expect next because there's nothing to base it off of. So then that makes it like an entirely new show because then you don't know where it can go. Right. And that's what I enjoyed about fear so much is that it was just a whole new, a whole new thing, you know, and I had nothing to go off of. So it was kind of like a, someone pushed me into some cold water. You know, <laughs> like that kind of breeze. Oh my gosh, it was so refreshing. I, I loved fear. I had, so yeah, when they get past the comic, I'm, I'm excited. It'll be a whole new, um, freedom for them. Oh yeah. And I think, I think the binge watchers aren't going to have as many complaints as the people who have to wait a week in between. Like except the people oh, who, don't, absolutely. who don't, who don't, you know, who, who watch season seven all at once, aren't going to care. Right. Agree, yeah. Some of the things. Wait, like the wait between like one and the doctor. You know, you watch that. That's resolved super quickly, and you're like, oh, what was I freaking mad about? Like <laughs> they answered that rather quick. So, <laughs> but yeah, I do. I I I always feel better about watching them back to back. But I can't resist. I have to watch them in the air. Oh, yeah. And I have something, you know. I I don't have to deal with the commercials, so I haven't had to, you know, deal with all that. But I've heard about it, so I'm just glad I don't have to deal with it. That would drive me crazy. How can you be How can you be invested in the story when after three minutes you're taken away for, like, a freaking Charmin commercial or something, you know? Like, for commercials in the first place. You know, we all got to buy it, and you're interrupting my Walking Dead for this crap, you know? <laughs> I would be so furious. I don't, I, so I can see why people would freaking be frustrated and the ratings are dropping, but I hope it picks up, you know? That's why. Back to my stick with it. Because I'm really excited for, yeah. especially with, like I said, with Maggie's character, I'm excited with where the Hilltop's going. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel once it starts picking back up, hopefully, I mean, there there should definitely be a spike no matter what for the mid season finale. And hopefully they can they can carry that over into the next the next thing. Uh because yeah, yeah, I mean it's right now, I mean obviously we we knew at the end of episode one that there would be a huge drop and there was. I mean it was seventeen million, then it went I believe it was to fourteen and then it's just been dropping down and down to ten. But I, I feel like um I was gonna say what is the ten million people is a lot of people. Yeah, t- it's, it's it does have ten yeah. million. It's still it's still the without a shadow of a doubt, and by far the the highest rated show on Sunday nights. Still, um, ten million is definitely pretty amazing. Still, um, but um, yeah, it, it went from the second highest watched episode. Now they're, they're the shows are about where they were in season three. But I feel like whatever happens this week, and then. To whatever the mid-season finale is, I think at the mid-season finale we're going to see definitely a, a spike in viewers coming back, um, and then hopefully whatever hook they have for the mid-season will will keep people coming back and invested in the next part. Do you think that it's it's because the show is seven years old, or do you think it's because of the show? I mean, I think any show at seven years sometimes people just lose interest. Yeah, I mean every 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 show kind of has their their slump. 
Um, but I don't really think it's a story thing. I think a lot of people um, either A, tuned out because they they were just done with the show after the first episode, or B, some of them were just, have just gradually, because, I mean, I've noticed it myself this season that the, the, like Alyssa was saying, the commercials are just so poorly placed apart that um, I've had people, and Alyssa's had people tell her that just flat out, look, I'll wait until it comes on Netflix or streaming or whatever to actually watch it. Um, right, yeah, so, a lot of people do that. So I feel like that, that's that's contributing to it, and then it's just people are, are wanting to wait to see it all happen because they, they're just kind of sick of doing the, you know, individual episodes. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. What, another quick question I wondered from you. Do you think um, people, do you think that the cliffhanger thing lost steam, or do you think people were still mad about the cliffhanger? Or do you think that they were, like the, the people that threatened to quit because of the cliffhanger, do you think they, they just tuned into the first episode to watch who died? Or do you think people got mad because it, of the violence in the first episode? Do you think that had anything to do with anything? I think it was a little of both. I think anybody okay. who was really mad at that cliffhanger and were like, I'm going to quit the show, I think no matter what, everybody came back to to see the ending. Because, okay. um, but at that point, I think some of them may have just been like, okay, well, Glenn died or whatever, and I'm done. I, I don't want to watch the show anymore. Um, I don't need that. Yeah. 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 And I mean, yeah, it well, was. Also, it I was think very, it was. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, it was, it was very, uh, a very graphic death, sure. Um, I mean, it needed to be. Yeah. And, um, but, you know, for the longest time, we're, we're used to seeing, I mean, for most intents and purposes, we've seen worse happen to walkers by our, our people. But to see it happen to somebody that even following, I think that's where everybody kind of got hurt or upset over it more. Yeah. Well, and it started, it started, it's a, a different way to start a season. I think I was mad at the cliffhanger and I think it paid off in a way, but I still think it should have been the season finale. I don't think it should have been a season opener. I, don't, I just, I feel like they wanted to get that cliffhanger to get, keep people talking like through the summer. So I think it was just kind of like, a cheap way to get people hooked. Because I think, I I still will say that that moment, I mean, it was while it was still sad and I still cried my eyes out, it would have had more impact had it been all together at that season finale where they're all lined up and then it ends, like, leaving us like like Maggie was, just left sitting there in the remains of, you know, a character that we loved. We, you know, that would have been a better way to end it sort of way. And I think that's maybe why this season feels so weird to people is because it started so well. So it's a, because it is, it's a weird way to start a season. So brutal and you just lose a major character, like a super dark episode. It's hard to start a season in such a dark place and expect the, the audience to rise up, you know, and stick with it. Cause those people are like, wow, you know, I waited all that summer, you know, this sucks. I wish it would have started with them coming back, you know, this fire in their bellies, they're all finding these new places. That would have been a better way to start this season, you know, people rallying the troops and meeting the new communities. That's just my two cents about that. <laughs> yeah. That's interesting, because I, 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 I was never mad about the cliffhanger because I expected it, but I expected it in a different place. I expected it with Negan coming out of the truck, and saying, my name's Negan, and then it's turning black. I didn't expect him to go in his old monologue. I expected you to right, see yeah. his face and to hear him say his name and be, like, freaked out, like, oh, my God, that's Negan, I'm, and then that's it. But, yeah, um, and that's what Stephen kept people as a hook for the summer. Like, oh, my God, we got a glimpse of Negan, and we know this moment's about to happen. You know what I mean? Even that would have been a good spot <laughs> to stop, you know? But if since he did launch into the monologue that he has, I would have thought that they would have then incorporated that death. But yeah, because I think that that the um the the hitting the hitting the camera, whatever, 
like it just lacked emotion because you didn't really get to feel. I mean, you knew someone right. was dying, but you didn't feel it. I mean, even if I, I don't know how I'm going to say this without sounding stupid. Um, <laughs> You're okay. Go ahead. Like if just seeing something the bat hitting something, even if you know it's hitting an animal or hitting uh, anything, if you don't really know what it's doing, you don't yeah. you, you don't have a connection to it because you don't know what it's doing. I mean, you know it right. And all we got were the you know sounds of people. And the, and the yeah, very you know cheesy James no, right? Bond blood thing running down the screen. Yeah, yeah. So you, totally. it didn't really matter. It's not like you have to know who it's killing to feel bad, because you should feel bad no matter who it's killing. But you don't. You, there was nothing to. You didn't have any. It was very disconnected. You didn't like. Mm. I, I I I didn't feel connected to an emotion of it. You were like. You, so you were left going like, oh, my God, what just happened? But you didn't have a, I didn't feel an emotion. Yeah. You're, like, you're left pre-emotion, like waiting for the emotion to happen. So, yeah. Then no, I felt super, I felt super angry. That was my emotion. Yeah, <laughs> they had me. I was down on my knees in front of my TV like, oh, my God, this is going to happen. Oh, my God. You know, they had me, like, falling already. So sad. You should right. feel not mad. Well, you should feel mad at him for doing it, but you should feel like, I mean, you should feel awful and sad and everything that, that goes with watching somebody be killed. You shouldn't feel mad that they did that to you. Do you know what I mean? Right. So your, yeah. your emotion was at the at the producers rather than your emotion <laughs> yeah. being mad at Negan for killing someone. So your emotion was outside of the show. You were taken out. Freaking outside. example. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Seriously. That guy, he, and then any time, he cracks me up, and then any time anybody asks him something, he has the perfect way that he just, like, dances around the question. I know. I always say that he has, like, he must have, like, a like a master's class in, like, vague answers and, and misdirection. Um, yeah, that's why the season has been filled with friggin' cliffhangers and all these loose ends, because he just likes to dance around things. Like, but you're, you're right. Like, the starting, usually when you see, when you see uh, the trailer at Comic-Con, you're like, oh my God, I'm so excited, because you usually see, like, Rick going like, do you know who you're messing with? And, you know, you know they're yeah. with the wrong people, and we all we saw was, like, you know, some sand walkers and some, I don't even know what we saw in the trailer. Like, Negan throwing around the bat or something. I don't even know. <laughs> right. you know? But you don't have that, like, it was hard to, and as a, as a blogger, it was almost impossible to write anything all summer except, like, Negan's coming, Negan's coming, who do you think did it, who do you think did it? <laughs> right, yeah. Crazy, crazy fan theories, like, uh, it's probably Abraham because um, they had Denise saw a, a can of orange crush and Abraham's hair is orange. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've definitely heard that one. My friend, that's what he said before. When he, I was like, what? That is how do you notice that? Are you serious? And then I, I told him up and down. I was like, it's not going to be two people. I think it's just going to be Glenn, you know? And no, he ended up. So now he rubs it in my face. He's like, orange crush. Oh, I was right. I'm like, whatever, dude. It's probably just random. <laughs> Coincidence. <laughs> oh, God. But, um, yeah, I think that maybe why this season feels so funny is because it's, it's we're all down. We're, we're not like there's nothing we're not yet we're not yet building ourselves up yet we're still well and people like instant we're gratification of, we're still under the thumb of them yeah and people like instant gratification and so they yes, feel they like do. they feel just like uh maggie does you know like we want revenge and we want it now like we want him dead now we don't want to wait a, a two whole seasons to see him dead you know but I get the anger, but, you know, you just kind of, I don't know, it's just what it is. You're either with it or you're not, you know. I tell people, I'm like, if you don't want to stick with the show, you don't have to, but 
I swear, it's kind of, you know, it's going to get really good. Yeah, I know, yeah. I mean, it has its ups and downs. There's, yeah, there's just episodes that I just think are just decent. You know, that's why anytime CJ's like, how'd you like the episode? I'm like, I loved it. I I literally like every episode. There's just some I like a little more. Right. Like, this Tara one was just decent to me. I was like, okay, that's interesting, you know, but I feel like... You know, maybe they shouldn't have had a whole episode about it because we have been. I do, but then again, I think you know what? I have been asking. Oh, gosh, I wonder what happened to Tara and Heath, and then I get a whole episode, and I'm Heath, and then they probably figured, yeah. well, we've got to put that whole other community in there, and so we put that in there with Tara and Heath. And yeah, I'm like one of the fans that complains, and then you know they give me a whole episode, and I'm like, oh, why a whole episode? So I probably should just shut up and not complain. <laughs> about it because I was what I was there's, wanting. I was wish you there's a reason for for everything that they've that they've got some big storyboard for all eight episodes. Right. Planned seasons ahead probably. And so all eight episodes are a big puzzle and it all fits in there somewhere. And so they've got if they took one piece out, it would throw everything off. So I figured I'll just mm-hmm. let them do what they gotta do. Right, yeah. I'm not a writer. I have no idea how to run a show, so who am I to talk? <laughs> All right, so so what is uh, everybody's final thoughts on uh, these last two episodes and where we are going to end up at the uh, end of this coming episode? I'm not a good speculator, but I can't wait for... Um, just more going back to the other places. I can't wait to see more Morgan, more uh, Carol, more Hilltop, and more Ezekiel, and I guess more Negan and Savior, and see what what the Alexandrians have to to do when they, yeah. they can start 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 combining forces. Yeah, I mean, I'm super excited for this next episode. You know, this whole thing with Carl was a big point in the comics, so I've been kind of looking forward to this whole thing with him getting in there because he has say, taken a weird kind of liking to Carl, so I think that dynamic is going to be interesting to see. Without Rick present, you know, how does Carl handle himself, you know, in real situations? Because he's always been protected by his dad in a way. So to be on his own in such a in hostile territory... It's going to be interesting to see, and with Daryl being there, so. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Oh, does anyone think that they're speaking Morse code? (laughs) I don't. Uh, You know, I I thought that maybe was, you know, I thought it was weird the placement of the Morse code, and then Daryl blanking on how he was, and I'm like, well, is he doing that because it's supposed to be like? We're supposed to pick up on this, but yeah. He's doing that (laughs) because Scott Gimple loves misdirection. (laughs) <laughs> yes, she does. <laughs> but um, yeah, I always that's what I'm excited for, Carl. Yeah, Carl, Carl. I've heard that the name of the episode is very related to Carl, which I have no idea. Oh, you'll enjoy it. I think this episode will. I think people will enjoy this episode. Yay! And I always remember that the second to the last episode sometimes is like really good. Like that was when Murphy yeah. died, and you know. Sometimes the second to the last can really set up a really good thing. Right, exactly. Well, all right, ladies. Um, I guess that that'll pretty much wrap it up for the the wrap up this week. Well, all right, ladies. I will chat with you all, right. all online in the meantime. <laughs> So we have a very special guest. They're always they're always very special guests. If you're on a podcast that is co-hosted by Special Officer Doofy, then you automatically are a very special guest. You know right? what I mean? Everyone's special on the show. Everyone is. Um, but this is a, a very cool guest because he's been in a lot of 
my favorite TV shows. And unfortunately, I couldn't talk to them. I really wanted to. Um, but I had a family commitment. Cub Scout pack meeting. Yeah, that's what it was. Um, but, uh, you know, you might you might know this guy from his role from Prison Break. And um, then he's also on an AMC show. What's it called? It's Humans. called What's Humans. It? And uh, season two is coming up on AMC uh, early next year. Not to be confused with being human, right? No. Yeah, different show. But yeah, he's been in that. He was in Hostage. His first movie he ever did was Hostage. I thought Hostage was a TV show. Uh, maybe a TV show too, but the, I'm talking the movie with Bruce Willis. Um, and there's the guy from Texas Chainsaw Massacre along with him. They kidnap, uh, I believe it's somebody's daughter. And mm-hmm. just Bruce Willis has to go in and basically kick their ass. And it's... A phenomenal movie. Not if it is Die Hard, I don't think. Isn't it called? It, it sounds like a Die Hard. It sounds like Die Hard. It it, it kind of is, but but yeah, no, it's it's a fantastic movie, and he's he's gone on to do everything. He was in uh, that show Aquarius with David Duchovny last year. He's uh, he was on oh, Bates yeah. Motel, um, as wow. well. So he's he's been very very busy. I'm actually surprised we got him for this. But but the good news is Dave, which, as you'll hear in the interview, he is open to returning, and he will have more to promote in a couple of months, so you, you won't necessarily Obviously, miss out. He's working so much. Yeah. Yeah, he's nice <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's going back here promoting a lot. Gonna get a, we, ought to get, we ought to charge him 10%. Yeah, give, give him a, a recurring role so he can promote his newest project. Yeah, recurring though. We're not going to make him a regular. No, not a regular. Recurring though. I can't afford. To, I can't. I can't bump up any special, very special guests to those contracts. Point. Can't do that. Nope. So, without any further ado, here is Mr. Marshall Altman talking with yours truly. Hey, how's it going, man? Good, yeah. Uh, yep, yeah, going pretty good. Thank you for uh, coming on to the show. We, we definitely appreciate yeah. it. Hey, I'm happy to be here. And uh, you've been a, a very, very busy actor recently. <laughs> yeah, it's been a, it's been a really good year. Yeah, I was, I was going through your IMDb, and it's like uh, it's it's a uh, really a who's who of uh, like successful TV shows going right now. Yeah, man, I, I, you know. I've just, uh, I don't know, man. It's been, it's been really nice. Um, you know, been doing it for a little while, so there's always ups and downs, and there's years that are better than others, and this has been a really good year, and hopefully it won't, hopefully it won't stop. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, you've been involved with some, some major shows. Uh, I remember, uh, I think one of the first ones that, that I personally remember seeing you in was Prison Break, which was a yeah. huge show. And, uh, yeah, were... I remember when we did that show, and it was started getting popular, and they were like, yeah, we're number one in Israel. And my mind just was completely blown. I mean, I was only, like, 19, I think, and, uh, and I was like, what? Would they watch TV in Israel? Like, it was so foreign <laughs> to me. <laughs> like, cause, you know, you consider it, like, the Holy Land or whatever. It's so all you hear about it. And then you're like, wait, they watch, like, violent television shows there? Uh, it really like it really busted my bubble of just being a kid from Texas and like you know well and then living in Los Angeles. So. Yeah. Now, now, um, was was Prison Break overall like your your first major one? Like when when did you decide to actually start acting? No. Um, so I had uh, I had other plans to be a professional soccer player. That was like my dream since when I was a young kid and. Um, got injured my junior year in high school right before you know we were doing all the recruiting and had colleges that I was talking with and um blew on my knee and then um and then when I came back from that it it got injured again and so I was looking for alternatives and someone kind of um on a whim just sort of was like hey you should go to this talent search thing and I was kind of blew them off and, and I went anyways and uh and I got this amazing response. And then they were like, 
yeah, pay us 500 bucks and we'll introduce you to agents and managers. And I was like, he knew it was a scam. They're just trying to take my money. And then once I knew that I wasn't going to be a soccer player, like a year later, they sent me like a half off coupon to go to the same meet agents and managers. I was like, ah, you know what? 250 bucks. Okay. (laughs) That's not as bad of a scam. And so I went and that's when I found my first manager there and graduated high school, moved out to LA to be an actor, never a doctor before. And then, um, so it was like kind of a progression of just like getting into classes and doing well in my classes and getting recommended for agents and then agents submitting you. And then I booked commercials and music videos and then, uh, I wound up getting my first theatrical agent and I booked like, uh, like a rash of co-stars, like back to back to back. And then, um, I ended up moving into a house with a bunch of other actors who were more successful than me. They were going uh, going out on auditions a lot more regularly, and one of them had come home and said, like, hey, you're perfect for this role that I just went out on, and I called my agent, and I was like, hey, guys, can you get me in on this? And I hadn't even read it. They were like, yeah, that's, uh, no, we're not, we can't get you in on that. And I was like, well, go ahead and push, do whatever you can, because I'm, I'm perfect for it, and I hadn't even read it. <laughs> and uh, so they did, they called the casting office, and like, I, I don't know what they did, it magic, and called me back and said, hey, if you can get, like, a reel together by Monday, you know, then uh, I didn't even have a reel at that time. They were like, they'll maybe see you like you're real. So I scrambled to get a reel together, sent it in, got an appointment. That ended up being hostage, and that was, like, the first major thing that I had booked um, that I did. And that was, like, a, I don't know if you know what hostage is. Oh, but, yeah. Uh, yeah, that was... Uh... That was a fantastic movie. I actually, I didn't see it when it came out in the theaters. I think that was 2005. I was just yeah. under 17 at that point, and I didn't sneak into a theater to see it, but I saw <laughs> yeah. it a couple years later, and uh, actually in college uh, when I was doing filmography, and uh, they, they showed that that movie, and yeah, that, that movie's pretty intense. Yeah, it was really intense, and I had no idea. You know, I was just a kid never really acted very much before um and it was just really rudimentary and um like all my acting training and stuff so i just did the whole movie on instinct and it was a pretty wild experience it was definitely definitely crazy and it's fun to kind of bond with bruce willis for a moment and, <laughs> and then just go back to my regular life i actually had a job um when i booked that and i had to quit my job to do the movie and then um after the movie, I thought I was rich. And so I went and bought all this stuff that I thought I needed. And, and then I called my manager and I was like, I was like, Hey, um, when are the rest of those checks coming in from hostage? And they're like, yeah, there's no more checks coming in from hostage. I was like, what are you talking about? I was like, I only got paid like half. Of what else was I supposed to get paid? And they're like, yeah, it's called taxes. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what do you mean taxes? <laughs> And uh, so I didn't realize that, like, you know, sometimes, like, half your money or more goes to taxes. And I had no clue what it was. I was just a kid. And I ended up getting a job at a coffee shop after that, after doing that movie. And people would be like, were you in, did you, were you in a movie? I'm like, nope, just making your latte. Yeah. Just making your latte. (laughs) And then, and then it was after that, that's when I got prison break. And then I had to quit that job. I had to quit that job uh, to go do the pilot for prison break. And then when I came back from the pilot for prison break, I had to convince them to give me that job back. And then when the show got picked up, that's when I finally quit my job. And, you know, since prison break went, I've never had a day job since. So it's been, it's been pretty fun. Yes. So, so, so you didn't, you didn't blow the the prison break money. (laughs) No, 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 I didn't. Well, actually the first season of prison break paid for my wedding and that was pretty expensive. So, um, you and know. then you did, I believe, uh, was that three seasons? I know they had four, but were you in the the, I was the quote unquote final? In, yeah, I was in. I was in. I was in the first episode. I think of the fourth season. I don't know. There was a point where they kind of like just stopped, like writing to my character, I guess. And you know, I was just, it was it was a little disappointing because it was like I had in my heart, like I loved. I loved LJ and I loved the storyline and just sort of felt like they, maybe they ran out of ideas. I have no idea. I actually haven't even talked to, to a lot of those guys since the show. So it's, it was kind of like a, 
it's an unrequited question mark on my head. I'm like, now with this new one, I'm like, what are they going to do with, like, is all these just going to disappear? Because I'm not in the new one. So it'll be interesting to see, like, what they do with the character and kind of where it goes, you know. But I was, I'm so grateful to have been a part of the show when I was. It was an awesome experience. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we've had, uh, I've had Sarah on before. Ah, um, Sarah's awesome. Yeah, and, and uh. Yeah, no, she she's coming back for it too. But yeah, it was kind of weird because in, I believe I'm trying to remember in the third season, I know it was kind of you and and her were were kidnapped, and uh, yeah, so that so you didn't see much of y'all for most of that season, and then I uh, know I just kept getting kidnapped. Yeah, I'm like guys, you were you were like the original Taken before the the, the movies came out. <laughs> yeah, it was like guys, I'm like at some point I got to get smarter about getting kidnapped. Like clearly there's a there's a target on, on LJ's head here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I got really good at, like, you know, the duct tape and, you know, the whole bit. Yeah, yeah, you, you became, maybe, maybe, like, at uh, some point your characters just decided he liked to be, like, kidnapped. Maybe that was, like, yeah. like Stockholm Yeah, maybe, like, LJ way into, like, S&M somewhere in, like, New York in a basement, and that's what he's up to. I always <laughs> imagine they just thought he went off to college, and they're just like, yeah, he's in college, you know? Yeah, he, and we send him Adderall every month, you yeah, know. He he just he just lives a normal life now. Yeah, totally. He he manages a target in Missouri. <laughs> yeah, it's um, yeah, and I believe I'm trying to to get the the dates right. I know uh, you went from it. It seemed like at least uh, from from when I watched it, uh, you went from Prison Break to True Blood, which was another very huge show. Yeah, that was awesome. It was really fun to go to that show when I did because it was so popular. And I went on the third season and the fourth season, and it was just, like, ridiculously popular. It was really interesting going from Hostage, which was a huge movie that not a lot of people saw in the theaters, and then going from Prison Break, which in L.A., like, Prison Break has a good, you know, reputation, only because, like, everyone in the industry's cousin somewhere in the Midwest, is it's their favorite show. So, like, people will be like, oh, yeah, Prison Break, yeah, my, my sister tells me that's great, you know, or it's like, oh, that's my uncle's favorite show, you know, so, like, but no one had seen it, really, in L.A., and then when I got on True Blood, everyone in L.A. watched True Blood, and so it was just a, it was just really interesting to see the town kind of react differently to your work. You know, when you feel like you've been doing the same thing for a long time and you see people, you know, what people choose to watch in what regions and where it's, where it's popular and it's so interesting. Um, and so it was really, really fun for me. Just like, it felt like almost like theater or something like, because people were so participative and so many people watched True Blood. It was, it was awesome. I mean, like, it was on like the cover of the Rolling Stone. It was really fun. Really, really fun while that lasted. Yeah, that was. Now you're saying that was one of the the major shows at that time. Uh, we've had a couple of the cast on from that as well. I know we've had Dennis O'Hare and uh, Alexander uh, Breckenridge on. Wow, uh, Dennis is uh, Dennis is awesome, man. What a talent! Great yeah, guy. Yeah, super sweet guy for sure. And um, it's 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 just kind of crazy, like when you when you when you think that pretty much. Um, I mean, 2008 was, I believe, when it first started, and then that was around the Twilight time as well. But then this came, and it was something completely different, obviously. And it, and it yeah, lasted. it was like the vampire ph- phenomenon that was really happening, you know. Yeah, um, and now it seems really like... They really benefited off of the vampire runoff from Twilight, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah it's like the uh, the Fifty Shades of Grey version of, uh, uh, of Twilight. Yeah, and yeah then, totally, um, totally. Yeah, now it seems like uh, zombies are taking over, and, and I know we we have a lot of the people from The Walking Dead on here, and, and you're actually on a, a show on AMC right now called Humans, correct? Yeah, yeah, I just did the second season of Humans. So I'm interested in seeing, would you be willing to uh, do anything on The Walking Dead? Is that a show that you follow, or? Oh, yeah, I would love to. I think, I think I've only, there's only been one role that I got to audition for on The Walking Dead. Like, there's only one role that ever came up that I was, like, right for, because, you know, I know the casting directors and everybody, so... Um, and then a buddy of mine got it, uh, 
and he's so talented. So it was like, okay, cool. And then um, I just auditioned for Fear of the Walking Dead, um, but I don't, I don't think I'm gonna end up getting it. But you know, surprise to all your your, your listeners are savvy. Like they know how the audition process works and all that stuff. So oh, yeah. audition a ton. You know, I forget a lot of things that I audition for, but. Yeah, but oh, I would love to be a part of The Walking Dead. I've only, as a viewer, I've only made it to like the second season, and then I haven't, I haven't uh, finished watching, finished watching the show. Uh, um, it, it'd be a, but, it'd be a chore to catch up now for sure. I know that's what happens. You fall too far behind. You're like, oh, that's on my list, and then you're just like, oh, man, I don't even know when I'm gonna have, you know, the time, you know. So, and now, but yeah, I would I, love, I would love to do that show. Now I know you mentioned a little bit earlier that you uh, you got married shortly uh, after Prison Break season one, and I'm assuming um, you, you have children now too, right? Yeah, three. Three children. Wow. All right. Um, I have I have one of my own, and uh, I sometimes it's like it's, it's crazy trying to find time to do stuff with her now with me doing the podcast and everything. And I've 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 been in a I've shot one movie so far. Um, yeah. I, I don't have a as wide of a filmography yet as you, but, uh, how do you balance everything? Since I, like you said, you've had a, a pretty that is busy, a, busy year. That's like a huge, yeah, that's a huge, it's, it's just a huge thing where you're just like, how do you balance work, work and family? And I mean, every parent goes through it. And some of it, the cool thing about acting is there's like periods where you do an intense amount of work and then, then you don't, you know, there's, there's kind of this, um, you know, these times where you're waiting around, like right now, like the industry is slow. It's going to pick up a little bit before Christmas. You know, people will try to get some casting done before the holidays, you know? And so I, you know, you anticipate that happening and then you're like, Oh, well, I've got to go here for a month and I've got to come back and then go back again. Like I was going back and forth to London for humans all year and then back and forth to Vancouver all year, um, earlier this year for, for Bates Motel. So it was like, you just kind of work it out and hope it goes right. And then if you get a job that's like, you know, where you're one or two on the call sheet and uh, you're leading the show and it shoots not in LA, then you just got to kind of figure it out. So both me and Jamie and my wife are, we're, you know, <laughs> we're just hoping for jobs in Los Angeles and then, you know, we'll figure it out. It kind of, it's kind of like our circus, circus folk. Um, but the trickiest thing for me to juggle has just been juggling like the directing and writing and producing and uh, all that with, with the acting and then with the family. That's been interesting and overwhelming, but awesome. So that's kind of where I've been lately. Is like just trying to figure out that balance. Yeah. I, I know um, Dave does at least uh, he does a lot of producing now as well. He does, he, he helps with writing. I don't know if he's directed anything recently, um, but I know he, he's heavy into producing movies as well when he, when he's not doing the, the acting and um, he actually moved out of LA. He lives, he's based in Charlotte now. Um, mm. And yeah, he's, he's, he's actually working on something tonight, which is unfortunately why he wasn't able to, to join us. But oh, um, yeah, like I, with, as you were mentioning with the writing and directing, is there anything that that you prefer more to do? Like, if you were to have a choice to do on on a film, what would it what would it be? No, I mean the thing that I prefer is just to make sure that like I have my overhead taken care of. So like I'm not a particularly uh, money hungry kind of person. Um, I do, but I do enjoy the freedom to with the directing and writing and producing is that my acting career is sort of funding that right now. Like that I, in the downtime for my acting career, I get to do these other things, which also helps me just with like, you know, an actor when, when you have idle time, it's just not good. Cause we live in our heads all day. We're super creative and imagine, you know, your imagination runs wild and like having downtime on your hands is a horrible thing. That's why so many actors pick up hobbies or start companies or do something is because there's this like odd, you know, uh, ebbs and flows in an acting career. So being able to write and direct, like I have enough projects that I want to work on that I could probably work nine to five, you know, 40 hours a week for the next like year. And I have, you know, that many projects I could be 
working on right now for writing and directing, which is awesome for me because I'll never, I'll never get bored or like, you know, sometimes in acting like you go out for parts and you're like, oh, I've been out for parts like this before and oh, I need to go out for it because I can't say no, but boy, it's just so uninspiring. And you're like memorizing lines and you're freaking out and crying at your auditions or you're killing someone or it just becomes like you can get really numb really quick. Um, and so it's always nice to have creative outlets, other creative outlets that you feel like are yours, you know, like as an actor, I'm a pawn in a way. And so creatively to have some autonomy or at least the illusion of autonomy with uh, writing and directing and all that, it's, uh, it's really nice. So I, I imagine I'll always do a balance unless one day I just, you know, <laughs> I don't know, like, well dries up and no one wants to hire me as an actor anymore then it's like okay cool then i got all this time for my project so hopefully but if 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 that never hopefully that never happens but if it were to happen hopefully i can get it rolling enough to where i can make a living off of it you know and i could choose both right and and uh speaking of projects i know it's actually the the project that uh we got in contact uh over i know you you just finished a kickstarter for a uh is it i believe five or six episode series called marriage in short correct yeah it's a short film series so it's um the idea is it's like a a five-part short film series on the comedy of matrimony and the idea is we're going to have the same actors playing different couples in different decades dealing with different socio-political issues within a marriage um and we finished the first one uh which is called make like a dog and we just we just completed the Kickstarter for the second one, uh, which is going to be called a tribulation. And each one is you know is going to be set in different decades. Um, so, make like a dog is set in 1963, and the next one, a tribulation, set in 2024. Right now, I mean, I'm writing it right now. Um, but yeah, that's the idea. So it's um, we're having a lot of fun with that. It's, 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 uh, now, now I did see the, uh, the 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 first one. And that was actually pretty hilarious. And, uh, <laughs> Thanks, man. Yeah, yeah. And seeing the the guy barking like a dog, and he he actually I, I don't know if if he's studied dogs in order to do that. You know, do it does the research, but his <laughs> his movements were pretty pretty uh, amazing. I have to say. Yeah, our actor. One of the great things about our actor, lead actor Mark Kelly, um, is he's like phenomenally good at movement. Um, like, he's a great dancer. He's done some commercials that are, like, pretty hilarious. If you saw, you'd probably be like, oh, I remember that commercial where he's gotten to do, like, this comedic side where he does this, you know, physical movement. So he's just, he's hilarious with his ability to dance and move. And, you know, yeah, it's just, it was so great. So when he busted it out on set, it's just like, Oh, we had a blast. I'm actually today I'm editing one of the rewards on the Kickstarter was like a, like a behind the scenes sort of like alternate outtakes from the movie. And, uh, so I've been at like going back through all the old takes of like when he, you know, made, made like a dog and, uh, and <laughs> just hilarious. They're so great. Jamie too. My wife actually is the, the, the lead girl in the film and, uh, so it's just been really fun going back through that and being like, oh, man, we had such a good time. It was only like a three-and-a-half-day shoot, but um, what a blast we had. Oh, yeah, yeah, and and uh, the set design and everything was spot on, too. Yeah, got to give a shout-out to Robbie Daly. He was amazing. Um, we spent, I think, God, I want to say, like, at least at least six months together just surfing eBay looking for props and stuff. At least. And then one of them was like really, really hard. We had to find a crib, like a 1950s or 60s crib. I finally found one on eBay in New York. They're really hard to find because people just get rid of them because they're hazards, because the bars are too wide and kids can like kind of get their, you know, limbs through them and choke. I don't know. I don't know what. They're just not safe. (laughs) And, uh, and, um, so they're really hard to find. We finally found one like in New York, and we, and they didn't really offer any expedited shipping because it's eBay, and so we had to ship it when they could ship it. And it arrived not the first day of the shoot, but like the second, the morning of the second day, like 
30 minutes or like 45 minutes before we needed it that day or something. It was just ridiculous. It was ridiculous. Yeah. Talk about last minute. Wow. Yeah. But yeah, so it was really fun to nerd out on the time period. And that's one of my favorite aspects is I love, I love production design because that's sort of like, um, even though I wanted to be a soccer player, one of my other major passions was art. So I spent a lot of time uh, just practicing different mediums growing up and was in a lot of art programs. Um, and so I had always thought like, oh, if I'm not a soccer player, I'll be an artist. And even when I moved out to L.A. to be an actor, I was like, oh, well, maybe I can fund, you know, do some acting gigs and help fund an art career and got so busy with acting that I ended up putting my art on hold, which my grandmother, who was an artist, she was always really disappointed about that. She had only wanted me to do two things in life, which was continue my art and, and go on, on the prices right. Um, and so at least I kind of fulfilled one of those. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, so yeah, we, uh, so doing production design really gets me to like express that visual art, you know, cause it's like, that's how you fill in the painting, you know, it's the part, it's the still life that they live in, you know? Yeah. So it's, it's really, it's really akin to painting or, or, uh, you know, art in general. It's, it's really fun. I can only imagine how the, uh, I believe you said it was 2025, how that's going to, uh, to be. Oh, uh, yeah. I, I wish I could tell you we don't have the, the things that I have like in store that aren't locked down yet are so exciting to me. So I've been, it's it's about a doomsday prepper couple. So I've been researching like all different types of views about doomsday and what goes into preparing for the doomsday. And uh, man, I just it's, I've been spending almost a year doing the research on it, and it's just I love it. I love I love diving in and figuring out time periods and all that stuff. So it's, it's really cool. And now on the on the Kickstarter, I know on the actual page itself, you can view the first episode. Um, is there any other outlets that they, that anybody listening can check those out on or just, just go to your Yeah, Twitter? I mean, our main hub is marriageinshort.com. Um, and uh, so that's that's the main place where you can go and see everything that's there. Uh, the Kickstarter helps, like, uh, you can just go to kickstarter.com and type in marriage in short or my name, Marshall on, on Kickstarter. And, uh, you know, that it'll come up and you can kind of see the whole vision that kind of lays out like why we're doing it, you know, but, um, but yeah, marriage in short.com is the main place. I mean, we, we host the videos from Vimeo, uh, and, uh, so I mean, you could find it on Vimeo. I'm about to upload it to YouTube too. I'm like, I'm just working on getting, um, subtitles done. You know, for, for like, I think I'm gonna do. I think I'm gonna end up doing like eight different countries for subtitles. I think it's kind of expensive, actually. Um, but yeah, but we we went over on our Kickstarter, so that was one of the cool things. Was when we went over on the Kickstarter, I was like, all right, we get to pay for the subtitles for Make Like a Dog. So I have so many people on online just like, oh, I wish I could watch it, you know, uh, but I'm French or. You know, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. He's got that that worldwide appeal, and and I know how some websites also kind of kind of block content to like local zones, which makes it hard too. Totally. Yeah, like I was talking to the subtitle people, and they're like, "Yeah, Google and China don't really get along." <laughs> and then they were like, and I was like, "So is North Korea out of the picture?" And they're like, "Yeah." <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Dang it." I know. <laughs> And uh, with, with this project, obviously you you still got, I believe, there'll be three three more shorts after that. Um, yeah. Now, now, was this your first time kind of dealing with Kickstarter? Or had you, no. Had you done any so I had been a part of a movie that I was producing and starred in that actually was like one of the first films to really go viral uh, on Kickstarter. It was like the kickstarter project of the year and it was kind of the, the one project that actually everyone realized like oh you could do some serious you know crowdsourcing for films on kickstarter it's called blue light jazz um you know it's based on like a new york times best-selling memoir um by the same title and um i got cast as the lead actor 
and was a part of the project for like four years. And right before we were going to go into production, like one of our financiers just walked, like just sort of mysteriously. And so the author of the book put out on his on his social media, like pretty much the movie's dead. And a couple guys from Tennessee contacted him, like, "What do you mean the movie's dead?" And they're like, "We want to do." They put together this whole pitch, and they actually put it all together on Kickstarter, and we're like, hey, why don't we try this new site called Kickstarter and see if we can save the movie? And so the filmmakers were like, uh, Steve Taylor, the director uh, and producer, was like, yeah, okay, we'll try it. And they had a campaign called Save Blue Like Jazz, and we ended up raising, I think it was like $350,000 from 4,500 backers. Um, and it was like the first, I think the next highest film that had ever happened on Kickstarter was like 25 or 50 grand. Um, but after that, it was like everyone I knew was calling me like, Hey, how do we do this? And, you know, I think we've, we could have had a consultation business. I think some of the, the guys that did it actually ended up starting a company to help people, you know, after that. And, but yeah, that was, that was, uh, the first time I had experience with Kickstarter. And then also Steve Taylor did a, another Kickstarter for his music. It was like, I think is probably the best Kickstarter video I've ever seen uh, for his band, Steve Taylor and the, and the, and the perfect foil. They, uh, they funded a, a record on there. I think they were only going to raise like 15 grand and they ended up raising like 150 grand or something. Oh, wow. And yeah, I mean, literally, and literally I will go back and watch his Kickstarter video. Like, it's so good. <laughs> like, it's almost like an episode of The Office. Like, legit, like, good. And, like, I've rewatched it. Like, I'm like, oh, I want to watch the Kickstarter video. So, I had that as my bar for, like, all right, if it's not in, if it's, if it's halfway as good as Steve's, then I'm going to be all right. <laughs> right. Well, well, if, if it's anything like The Office, like you're saying, then, then it's definitely got to be amazing because that's one of my favorite shows, bar nine. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, I can't believe I just like recommended a Kickstarter video, but yeah, yeah, it's, uh, yeah right? it's amazing. Now, now, now everybody's going <laughs> to check that out. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> now, now for the, uh, the next episodes, are you going to be doing Kickstarters for those as well? Or if, if anybody wants to donate yeah. still, is there outlets they can do that? Yeah. So yeah, on marriage and com, there's a place to donate and we're actually getting ready to just set up some, um, some incentives, uh, Oh, like just like a little thing that says like, hey, if you donate this much, we'll you know you'll get this. Even though most of the incentives from Kickstarter won't be there, we're gonna have a couple up there. So, uh, but yeah, people have already been like donating like you know five, ten bucks just through the PayPal on Marriage in Short. We just have that set up for people that just love it and want to want to be a part of it. And then whoever gives on there, I'll go back to them and say, hey, we have these incentives, you know. So if you give a little bit more, like you can get this incentive or that. So. So yeah, as soon as if you went there and, and and you gave to us, like I'll have your information and try to you know if you send us your I think I don't know if PayPal sends me your email, but I'll figure it out. But but yeah, we're still we're still taking donations and and then hopefully next year towards the end of the year, just like this one, we'll have a a film ready and a Kickstarter ready for the next one. So awesome and. and... I'm definitely looking forward to the next episodes, and and obviously, uh, hopefully, you continue to stay busy. I mean, you've you've been all over TV, like I said, this this past year, and and uh, it's been awesome to watch your success for sure. And uh, yeah, thanks, man. And, thanks. Uh, and I do want to thank you again for for coming on the show. If there's anything else you'd like to promote, feel free to do so. Um, also, your your channels or outlets if where they can follow and check on any updates with you. Yeah, the uh, I was going to say one of the things is a little bit confusing. I get asked a lot is Human Season Two is airing in the UK now, and then it'll air on AMC I think in February, I think or January of next year um, in the US. So, I mean, you know, we wouldn't know anyone going out there and torrenting the show because that that'd be really bad, really, really, really bad. Yes, don't don't do that. Not only is it illegal, no. but that that that's why your your favorite shows die early. Yeah, it's, it's kind of true. But yeah, no, it was a, it was a pleasure to be on here, and, and it's always a joy to, to to get to chat and and also you know tell people about our little short film series.
my it's my little labor of love. And it definitely comes across on the uh, screen for sure. Thanks, man. Thank you. And obviously, if you ever have anything you need to promote again or whenever it's come due for the the next episode, you're more than welcome back on the show. Maybe the next time, Dave will, will actually be able to join us. Yeah. <laughs> if he really exists. I mean, we, I mean, I don't know. I don't know if, he, if, if it's, he's just a pigment or if he's a real person. You know, I'm <laughs> I'm questioning it, too. Sometimes I don't know. Yeah. He, he, you know. <laughs> I mean, it, Maybe we're dealing with like a little United States of Terror situation here. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm Dave and Creech. But, but, yeah. but unfortunately, I wasn't in Scary Movie, so. <laughs> oh, that's funny. That's funny. That would make for an interesting podcast. That would that would be. You know what? I should I should just do a podcast where I just talk to everybody and I am everybody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. just do horrible impressions of of each person. And then just continue on and just act like, you know, I'm none the the wiser. Yeah, you're like uh, Eddie Murphy in Big Mama's house. All right, man. All right, dude. All right. And by one. the way, do you like being called CJ or just Creech or what do you um, prefer? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't mind CJ. Okay, usually, cool. usually, usually yeah. I just go by Creech on, on the show because it sounds better Dave and Creech show than, than Dave and CJ yeah. show. Yeah, totally. That that one they extra. Have to be CJ and Dave. Yeah. Yeah, the one yeah, extra, one extra um, syllable. syllable just kind of messes everything up. Yeah, monosyllabic, baby. That's the way to go. <laughs> exactly. All right, dude. All right, man. Well, cool. All right, Kudich. Well, I'll talk to you soon, man. Thanks All right, for man. thanks for everything. Well, that was super insightful. I'm a different person now after listening to that. Marshall, Marshall, Marshall. Yeah. Um, well, hey, Creech, we're going to get James. James, James Frazier. Frazier. Yeah. We're going to get him on the show soon. Uh, we're going to wrap about um, the upcoming Walk for Stalkers. I have a lot of questions for that man. I, I, I want to find out what the future has in store for the Walker Stalker conventions, you know? And um, we should kind of. You know, I don't know if you reached out to anybody uh, on, you know, in our podcast community about what are some places where they, where they, our listeners, would like to see a Walker Starker convention come that we could talk to him about. We he's could. the man to talk to about it, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's the overseer of both uh, Heroes and Villains Fan Fest and Walker Stalker, uh, and he... Uh, not ju- we actually just won't be talking to him soon. We're going to be talking with uh, Tamara Duarte, uh, and she's in Netflix's Longmire, which will be... Oh, nice. So we'll be talking to her soon as well. Well, that's good news. So, um, well, this was a great episode. I thank you for, you know, getting me out of bed at 11.30 at night. Now it's 1 a.m. Now it's 1 a.m. Yeah, we're in the bewitching hour. I know, and I've got work to do. I've got to get this letter of recommendation over to this dude that's trying to earn his general contractor license. And well, he has to mail the package out tomorrow morning. So I've got to go home and write this letter. Um, yep, and I've got I've got been podcasting for six hours now, and i gotta, I got to edit all this stuff together to, to get it up. I cannot believe you're a workhorse, man. You are a, a monster when it comes to stuff. Well, hey, I wanted to thank everybody for listening. Episode 42 is in the can. This is Dave Sheridan, CJ Creech, the Dave and Creech Show. Episode 42 is now in the can. Thank you so much for listening. We hope you enjoyed it. And tune back in for episode 43. We'll talk to you then. Shut up and sit down. Shut up and sit down. Thank you for listening to the Dave and Creed Show. The views and opinions expressed in this podcast are solely those of Dave and CJ. These views and opinions do not necessarily represent those of Creed Creative Productions or any of its affiliates. <laughs>